All right, welcome to the Save Cast number 165 with Daisy Fletchy. Daisy, how are we doing this fine afternoon for you, morning for me? It's definitely, I guess we're leaning into evening. But yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I, I like I, I used to live kind of central USA, so it, this used to only be like six hours behind, but now I'm on the West Coast, so it's, it's just, like eight, right? Yeah, it's eight hours. It's just ridiculous. And for Australians, I mean, I'm literally just, I have to just rewind the clock a few hours, and it's just the next day for them. Then it's just weird. So I wonder if uh, the Australians have had their bowl of cereal yet. Sorry, say that again. I wonder if the Australians have had their bowl of cereal yet. <laughs> I know. No, seriously, like that, like Seabed's <laughs> probably just waking up. Like I just talked to him last week and uh, like it was just so odd trying to schedule this. And then, uh, of course, there's always scheduling errors because somehow it's like half the guests that live across the world from me. We always end up not getting the hours quite right. I'm surprised this actually worked out with you. This was this actually worked when out. You, but, you yeah, know. when you messaged me earlier and was like, I'm going to clean two hours. I was like, okay, like that's what I thought too. Like, this is perfect. Well, I am excited to get you on. Finally, it feels <laughs> like, you know, I've been doing this now for three, like three plus years. And so there's all, there's still like this actual, like decent list of guests I haven't gotten through at all. So, uh, but you've, you act, had actually been on that list for a while. So I'm excited. Really? Yeah. To finally talk. I like, I will just go through my like following on Twitch sometimes and I'll just like list down i'm not going to tell you everybody that i'll skip over <laughs> like there's most of the, the vast majority of people that i follow on twitch i'm like okay i want i want to talk to them eventually that'd be interesting i so. want to know who's on the uh do not talk list that's <laughs> a that's list i'm interested I don't, in there, there's not even a list for it maybe i should make a list for that though actually um i guess let's just get like a brief introduction of who you are though daisy and just i guess your history in osrs potentially um this question i'm always like how much do i say like how much <laughs> how much do you want to know um but i started streaming on twitch just over four years ago um i do it completely for fun just in my spare time i usually do the pet hunting uh, hunting the little guys um there were some questions about like my history in old school so i'll leave that for like, a little bit later in the cast but yeah been okay. streaming four years um Pretty Main. inconsistently, honestly. <laughs> I'm getting better with it, so. Would you say mainly pet hunter? Like, do you have any clogging aspirations? Uh, mainly pet hunting. Pet hunting is the goal currently, I think. Um, yeah, I would love to be a clogger because, like, the collection one pop up makes me so happy. I don't have the, you know, the audio. Who is it? Sea Engineer, I think. Um, oh, yeah. Is that the one that comes yeah. up? Yeah. I don't have that. I just have the little pop up guy um but i love that so i don't know maybe in the future i actually went to uh the crusader party up in vegas during twitchcon with c engineer he was up there and i i had him like irl do the collection log like collection log <laughs> completed and I was did like, he do oh. it yeah he did it and i was That's just, awesome. i just felt like i completed like an irl uh collection log which was pretty cool so yeah i didn't get a pop i didn't see a visual pop-up but i imagined it so it was good enough if there was like one thing that I could get him to say that was like a permanent in my life, it would be like, you know, in the video where he's like teasing the noobs. Yeah. I love that. I want him to say that. I will not everything. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I'm actually like, like just, just on the topic of like making sounds for just things like, it's actually so crazy how room, how far rune lights come with the customizations. And in my opinion, I don't even think it's crossing any like, uh, bad boundaries or anything i think it's just all fun like it's uh, at least vast majority of it seems to be just like fun and all the work like just quirky changes you can make is just really cute like i've people have been asking me when i'm gonna make like a custom sound for clue scrolls dropping on the ground because <laughs> apparently you can do that now and i'm just That's cool out of date with it but i'm like huh i wonder what it'll be i hope it's not like some random like <laughs> screeching that i do uh, occasionally people want that i think they want me to like Give the people what they want. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can deal with it, though, because I have to listen to that off stream as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I think my my client, my room light, is, like, super basic. I have, like, a I have the resource pack, and then I have, like, the, you know, must-have plugins. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you've seen... I'm going to bring them up. I don't know if you've seen, like, OP's client um, with, like, the rainbow rave on everything. 
yeah. Like, um, yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. You've seen like a cold ones, um, disco inferno. He, he, he hasn't done one of those in a while, but it just like, he marks every single tile. Every single thing has like rainbow rave and just everything's just a, a mess. Everything has like a inventory tag on it. And it's just like random info boxes across the screen. Like he makes it as cluttered as humanly possible. I don't think it's on the I level don't, of OPs. I don't know how people can play it like that. Yeah, it's I cool. um, I recently started using like the rainbow rave, but like very brief. Like I use it on my side swing and I have it on blood runes. Don't know why blood runes, but... Every time I get a blood room pop up, it just like does a rainbow rave thing. Nothing else does. I don't know why, but it, it's awesome. So, <laughs> but yeah, having everything on the screen, I, I can't do it personally. But. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've always been kind of like an aesthetic player. Like I want things to look really nice. I need my, I, I don't know if I'm even on, like I see other streamers and stuff. I would say I'm probably on the more minimal side of plugins, although I do have like quite a few that are like somewhat obnoxious like i use path marker so like whenever i'm running anywhere in the game there's always like the trail that i'm about to hit oh, like, okay. which i try to keep as minimal as possible so it's just like a very very light thin like white box but it's i don't know a lot of people are like that's too much to look at i've gotten used to it though is that like an advanced version of true tile i think it's called like yeah that. so there's yeah. true oh i don't know if you use corner true tile yet i don't oh, i am so addicted to that that is amazing it's so good i yeah i don't know i'm like super minimal on plugins i um i remember i was i guess not recently i was learning top but i got into like learning hard mode quite recently and um when i was learning people were like oh like you need this plugin you need this plugin and i was just like no <laughs> i don't like i promise i'm fine um i made it so much harder for myself like it absolutely wasn't necessary that i use nothing but yeah, yeah. no I, but there is that kind of annoyance of like here just install this huge package like this it'll, it'll <laughs> give you everything you need and it's like i don't want to see this like i just don't yeah. want it that's like sepulcher i mean people it's like whenever you start off sepulcher, it's like make sure to install this massive circus pack or it just makes your whole sepulcher just this mess of colors I'm like, no, I love no thanks. Sepulchre. Like, I, I do quite a bit of it because I don't have the agility pet yet, and that's how I want to get the pet. But, like, I've streamed quite a bit of Sepulchre, and I get a lot of people come in and kind of be like, hey, like, you know, what's what's the best way to get started on this? And um, Max has, like, a good guide on it with some great tiles. Um, but when I learned it, I just went in and kind of, like, marked random ones that helped me. Mm -hmm. um, but some of, well, my floor five on Sepulchre looks a little crazy, but some people's plugins on Sepulchre is like, I, I don't know how you know what's going on here. Out of control. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've used the absolute bare minimum when it comes to Sepulchre. I have like very, very few tiles marked, but I've also spent like a couple hundred hours there. Yeah, I, I don't, you get used to it, right? Yeah. Like it's just, you just start knowing where to stand and... And like when to click to. Yeah. It's... It's pretty chill. It's it's all just patterns. Like I feel like inevitably, when you're starting off Sepulcher, you're just gonna have a headache. Like it's just a mess. You're trying to memorize these patterns, and yeah, it's just like just give it some time, and you'll start memorizing. You'll just start. And the the coolest part, at, at least for me, with Sepulcher was you start recognizing patterns you never saw before, and yeah. you're able to like fully know that you're safe like running that like my the best example of this one is like the southern path to floor four entry where you have that massive straightaway that just has those arrows heading at you and like if you've timed everything perfectly then the last arrows that shoot out at you before you make that left turn over to like the bridge um you can literally oh, just yeah. ignore the arrows entirely because you've not lost any ticks basically and this is like some advanced stuff where like you you get to the point where you're like you just know you're safe and that's like where like the comfort kind of sets in you don't need to be stressing about about every single arrow that's coming at you and i think that's really like where supple kirby start, starts becoming really fun i did sepulcher off release and i remember being like hard stuck on floor to free for like nine hours 
<laughs> like at the end i just i just didn't get it but i find like when you find those little niche places that you can like dip into like you usually find them by accident and you're like oh cool <laughs> i can hide it um yeah no that's uh, whenever i think of like sepulchre release i think of ari slash because he was stuck on that floor four pattern where it's like you have to <laughs> Whatever that floor four straightaway is before, like you, like right before the paths collide again and uh, entering the floor five, he could not pass that. Like he was just molding, and it is funny just seeing how much how 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 many people were molding honestly on release of Sepulchre. I only did a little bit on release, but so what? I think that pass specifically. Sorry to cut you off. I no, think that good. pass specifically with like the sword on like the weather pass come back to rejoin again at the end of it for yeah, yeah. one of them is like you have to be like pretty much on time <laughs> or like it's taking your head off you know like <laughs> just forget about it yeah it, um, the worst part i think the thing that really annoyed me about that was i would literally wait there by the blues like <laughs> you, you always approach there right as the blues are about to end and then you have to like, yeah. wait awkwardly <laughs> just like come on like shine again and instead of doing that, you can literally just run through it. But for some reason, I always had like that mental disconnect where it's like, no, 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 I need to stay here and I need to hit a blue. Like I want the blue. This is a traffic light and I can't move yet. <laughs> literally, that was always how I did it. And it would just be so rage inducing. You get sent back and it's just like, oh, gosh. I know. Yeah. But Sepulchre, it is so much fun. I'm a huge fan of it. I am I just hit 38 mil. I still am missing a giant squirrel. Oh, God. I think I'm 28, so a little bit less than you, but I'm approaching 2k laps, so oh, wow. Not okay. quite, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. at like, not. I think I'm not even 1500 laps yet. So. Oh, did you do all very the team efforts? Yeah, I guess you did, right? Iron Man, I gotta keep my marching yeah. grace up, which yeah. is so depressing. Grace. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually that was one that was what I was gonna AFK earlier, but I decided to do my Karambon fishing. But normally oh. I would do roof rooftops on Save casts. Um yeah, so yeah, but anyway, so just going back to like the plugins, that was one where people have just been it's like, why don't you just install the circus package and get all the <laughs> tiles? I'm like, no thanks. I just I, I can deal with playing the game minimally. Yeah, so. I just, I like learning stuff too, like actually learning it rather than kind of like relying on the plugin. But I think that's just, I like simple. Um, so I don't like a ton of stuff on my screen. Um, and I'm by no means saying, you know, I'm a great player because I'm absolutely not. But I like to know what I'm doing rather than like relying on something else. Totally. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. No, I think you actually, I mean, you have what, 42 pets, right? Yeah, 42 pets. So what do you, what what are like the big ones you're missing? Um I'm missing I think I have six one in five Ks left. So I have all of God Wars other than next. Um Corp I'm missing and BA I'm missing and one more DK pet. Um and then the other ones are kinda of like okay. Like a few skilling ones and like Musper. Okay, so you have oh I actually just I, I was lurking your twitch clips briefly just to make sure, make sure there was <laughs> oh, nothing crazy. that that omelet that omelet clip's amazing the omelet is so ridiculous and it's, it's funny you mentioned omelet because that was the pet that actually made me realize like okay maybe i can get all pets at this point um but yeah getting the omelet on the death um was crazy um i'm glad i was streaming that day because that's too good of a moment to not have. Literally. Um, but yeah, pretty insane. And my face too. Like I'm just <laughs> completely confused. I just, yeah, that's a good clip. I like that one. Yeah, that's the last thing anybody would be expecting is to get a purple and then a pet. <laughs> like right there, <laughs> right after dying. Yeah. Now that was good. Um, and you got a bloodhound too? I have bloodhound. Yeah, I got super lucky on bloodhound. I think... 119 clues um which is pretty lucky i don't know if you know what my luck is on pets i've just um, ju based on the twitter thread it looks like you have pretty good luck but you can tell me <laughs> uh i am 1700 hours lucky on wow pets. <laughs> yeah wow so what what is what are like your top three like biggest spoons would you say um omelet 
Cobb. I got that one on 36 KC. And Nightmare. I got that one day of release at Mass. Wow. That's <laughs> nuts. Yeah. Getting anything day guess... of release is pretty pretty nuts. You haven't had any yeah. one KC pets though, right? No, I've had a couple of like double digit pets, like KQ with double digit, Nightmare. Um I can't think. There's a few. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty lucky. And Bloodhound was obviously a huge time save as well. So Yeah. I was I was gonna no ask you. KCs, yeah. I was gonna ask you because I, I wasn't sure if you had Bloodhound yet or not, but um yeah. they made a change literally just yesterday where you can like juggle masters. I do you still do your masters just for fun or are you just like No, like... I do I, I do some masters. I've been looking to do more elites recently because I do want some of the collection logs. Um but I think it's so fun how it says you have a sneaky suspicion, like you would have gotten a leak clue. I love that. That's awesome. Oh yeah, I haven't even seen that yet because <laughs> I I hold on. All right, I never hold on to clues. But yeah, uh, we were doing some hard modes last night, and yeah, when you would have gotten a leak clue, it says you have a sneaky suspicion, and I love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So now now you're gonna be have you're gonna have to deal with. Uh, well, I guess it's not that big of an inconvenience at all. It's it's mainly an inconvenience for the people that want to do their clues. But with yeah. this update, now you're basically kind of like obligated to drop your elite clues outside of every raid. Just so, I mean, like if you have an elite that you haven't done, basically, like if you're doing a, a raiding session, drop the elite clue outside, go do the raid. And if you get a duplicate, then you can like just do both of them at the same time. And they last an hour, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's so. awesome. It's like odd because I was talking about this, like I made a ramble on it yesterday and I was talking about it with my stream because this feels like they're really, it looks like Jagex really wants to get stackable clues in the game somehow and they have to make like these little like micro updates to like lead us into it comfortably. <laughs> that's uh, okay. Apparently that's actually not the actual reason why they're doing this. I actually got a DM from somebody. Um, let me actually just read this because this is really interesting. Uh, where is it? They so, had stackable clues in leagues, right? I didn't play in the last leagues, but they had stackable clues. Yeah, ev every league they've had stackable clues. Yeah. So, like, in my opinion, and I've shared this opinion just ad nauseum, basically, so anybody that listens to multiple Sebe casts and knows my opinion on this. I, I personally don't want to see stackable clues. I want to see just being able to pick up as many clues as you want. So there's not like this just insane amount of clues that's just in a stackable inventory space. Like a middle ground? Yeah, so this, this would be more like a middle ground and it just, I feel like, offers actually more diversity and more sort of like thought into how you're clue solving because with my scenario like it would be you could pick up as many elites as you want but every single one has a unique id so like you can't just have unlimited of them and you can't just have a, a stack of 100 just sitting in your inventory it would be like you have this kind of natural limit where you would only probably want to solve like four at a time or something like that but you can just shove the rest of them in your bank of course they would all have unique ids so you can't just have thousands of them in your bank because you know they're not technically the only ones that would stack in your bank are the ones that actually have the same step but mm -hmm. yeah yeah ba basically it's like a way of being able to solve more clues at once one of the examples i always bring up is like let's just imagine you're doing hard clues and you did one hellhound task and you just pick up all the hard clues you get from the task so let's just say you get like four and then you can just go solve them all at once right after your task is over and as you're solving them, you would get a step, for example, like agility pyramid on one of them. And instead of running an initial, just immediately going to do that agility pyramid step, you would wait and try to solve the other three. Because what if you got an agility pyramid step on that one too? Then you could do two birds with one stone. You know what I mean? So it's like. I mean, it in the sense of like the clues wouldn't like be stackable as like one inventory space. You mean just like, you know, like max you can have in your inventory is 28, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So it, it, that that is where like the natural limit comes. It would offer just a lot of different ways to solve clues. Like, are you going to be a person that just still wants to do your one clue at a time? Or are you going to be a person that's really going to try to like push the limits and try to solve like eight at a time? By the way, I just got an elite clue bottle. That was amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. I, I, I love elite clue bottles. They look so gold. <laughs> 
Um, Can we keep it so you get the sneaky suspicion text? I, 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 I want to hear your reaction. I will keep it this time. I actually have okay. a easy and a medium I already got today, like just within the uh -huh. last 20 minutes. So you're welcome. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when I see it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's like the system I would like to see. And I think it's, I don't know, I, I feel like I get worried about the slippery slope of having an actual stackable inventory space that has you know people just say like up to five or up to 10 or up to 25 but then like at what point is it just going to be like up to 100 or up to people 1, are always going to push that right like people are always going to want more so exactly yeah i think being able to pick up more for would be like a nice middle ground i'm probably like one of the worst people to talk about this with because i don't really <laughs> do clues and i don't know who i'm like pissing off by saying that <laughs> Yeah, no, no. I mean, most people that I talk to like don't have the obsession I do with it. I, okay. I, my my obsession has only grown too. Like I'm now, I'm just absolutely frothing over my next piece of third age. Whenever that happens, it could be years from now. Could be the next. So, are casket. you looking to like complete the clue collection log? Is that no? Is that what we're doing here? My my goal, like this is. I'm trying to think of when I came out with this goal. It was probably like four years ago or something on stream. I was like, you know what I really want? Like, I want a full third age set. Like, that would be, like, that's like the ultimate flex on an Iron Man is to just walk around with a full third age set. Like, that, you just can't beat that. Like, there's nothing else that's going to compare. And now I'm three of four melee set. Okay. So. That's exciting. If I get that helmet, it's like, oh my God. But then, it, I don't know. It feels like the goalpost always moves because if I get the helmet, then I'm going to be like, I'm going to be super, super happy. And by the way, for those listening, like this is not just getting, a, this isn't going to be as easy as the last three pieces. This is like, now I'm legitimately going for something that takes like one in 40,000 <laughs> caskets. Like this you just is, know you're going to get a duplicate too. Like exactly. It's, it's just not, it <laughs> it's not, it, it's not going to work out. But <laughs> then I would want the long sword and then I would want the amulet and then I'd want the cloak. And then it's just like, I don't know. I feel like the goalpost. And next thing things. you know, you're going for the whole collection. Yeah. Long, so. And then, and then next thing we know, there's like squeal of fortune and we can just, you know, pay real money for our third age yeah. collection logs. No, that's not happening. We're not Hopefully doing that. Hopefully not. Right? We're not doing that. Hopefully not. I mean, I, yeah. I always get worried. Have you seen, like, the botting problem in this game? Um, yes. We just spoke about support guys, so they are, they're, like, hiding out there. But, yeah, it, it's it's bad at the moment. I think they're aware of it, but I think there was a statement that somebody put out at some point that, like, as quickly as they ban them, they just make new accounts. Um, yeah. Which isn't great, but... Yeah, like there's that going on, but there's also just bad incentives. Like just, it, it's clear to everybody that the more bots there are, the more Jagex is profiting. Like that's just yeah. simple. And so because there's that bad incentive, there's never a super good reason to get rid of them, especially if you're not seeing like a mass exodus of players like just outright annoyed with the botting situation. Like everybody's still playing. So in Jagex's eyes, they're like, oh, this is fine. Like we're making a ton of money. The botting's not killing the player base, and we're just chilling. So that's, I don't know. It just it just looks so bad. Like I play as an Iron Man, so it, this really isn't affecting me at all. Really, it's just an eyesore going. Or, oh, the only thing that it really affects is like LMS and stuff. But I don't really do LMS. But that that that's something where you're like directly getting. You're having to deal with bots. And a lot of people actually like just being able to kill random bots, but I hate that. Like, I think it's so boring. <laughs> I would love to know, like, the percentage of bots that, like, are members. So, like, are buying bonds. And then I would love to see, like, that in a number. Like, how much money <laughs> is coming from this percentage of bots? It's got to be so massive. I always, I get questions sometimes, yeah. like in, in my stream, people will be like, how are bots, like if bots aren't paying for membership, how are they making any money? But they're the ones buying the bonds and like somebody's buying the bonds basically. Yeah. So that's what I have to tell them. It's like, somewhere. yeah, I, you know what? One of the things I did ask though, this is something I'd be very curious of how, what is like, how many bonds has the person that's bought the most bonds? bot okay that was like the <laughs> messiest thing. i see what you're saying yeah. um yeah you're 
on the on the bond subject, you're yeah. an alien, so this probably doesn't affect you too much. But like, have you seen the price of them recently? Like, I'm going broke. It's I, crazy. I, I don't like know how bots mil. are keeping up with this. It's like twelve or something. Oh my 11, God. 12? Let me let me look. I'm not looking at it. Yeah, right they're now, like but... eleven mil right now. Oh my god! And then you have to like literally do the redemption thing, so yeah. it actually it ends up being like twelve mil. Oh, that is painful. I can't keep up. It's crazy. I don't know how the bots keep me up. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually pretty wild. So I don't. It's really odd too, because again, like I don't play a main, so I've never needed to like buy. Well, I'm also in the content creator Discord now, so they just give my one. I only play one account, so now they just give me free membership. So I literally have not had to deal with this forever. But like, I have a friend that would buy gold, and then he got banned for buying gold at one point. So then he just started buying bonds, and mm. I don't know how much he spent, like, because he was just single and he would have like these addictions to RuneScape every several months, you know, and then he would quit and then he'd come back, and it was. I feel like I don't I don't know this for for a fact, but it seemed like what he would do is play for a little bit and then stake everything, you know, get cleaned, and then he'd have the that's addiction come good. back. <laughs> yeah, that's not good at yeah, all. Not not good at all. But he would st he started buying bonds, and I, I just I know he wouldn't be honest about it, but I'm really <laughs> curious how much he's given to Jagex, like real money, just to buy bonds because he used to just like pull up with you know full ancestral randomly. I'm like, huh, where did you get that? <laughs> Where'd you get that from? Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Honestly, what I took from that conversation is there's free membership in the content creator Discord, and it's now your job to get me in there because I will <laughs> the, actually. The I will actually, situations are wrong. Yeah, I will actually give you a shout out. They only they only do it for one of your accounts, but if you're like me, you just play one account anyway, so you're good. That works. That works for me, honestly. I've given a couple shout outs to people because that I mean that's how I entered the content creator Discord. Like people just gave me a shout out. They're like, hey, like Sabe streams here throw them in here and they threw me in there so that's cool yeah so uh, yeah I'll, I'll definitely give you a shout out especially now that you've been on yeah. the cast now i now i have to yeah i've made it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so the botting problem's not great but ultimately it's not like it's deteriorating the game that much and i also just after talking to matt k on the cast i just can't even i don't have enough brain power now to just get mad about bots because it's just not worth it it's like I, I i have no power over any of this so there's probably like a lot more that goes on behind the scenes too that like we just don't know because like i work in the games industry too mm. um so yeah i mean my game specifically we don't necessarily have like an anti-cheat um team but i imagine that like if there is something that they could do that's like beneficial to the players and them like they would do it um but i think NTT have their own things going on so totally yeah and i have no idea what's actually happening i mean according to the data they presented like there's tens of thousands of bots being banned every single mm -hmm. like week which yeah is nuts i believe that yeah no i actually probably believe that too like i don't see why they would lie about that just that sounds unnecessary so I, I just sometimes I don't think I have a full grasp of how massive this game is and how yeah. how many problems they need to solve. But yeah, it's, so so what do you do uh, in the games industry? Can you can you tell us about that? Yeah, I um I'm a community manager for I work in mobile gaming. Um, so yeah, I'm a community manager. I do a lot of like what Aiza does for RuneScape for mm. my game. Um. So I can kind of relate to some of their problems sometimes and like understand from like more of an insider perspective. Is the game like big? Like, are you allowed to share what it is or would you rather keep that private? Uh, <laughs> hmm. It's like a music mobile rhythm game. Okay. Um, my, yeah, my it's kind pretty of awesome. Game. That's my kind of game. Yeah, I've always been rhythm so based. Yeah. <laughs> really? I, I, I had like crazy obsessions with Guitar Hero um i i played that game like i swear to god like four years straight i mean just like that's all i focused on it was just like i'd come back from school and i played guitar hero with my friends guitar hero is such a good game it was so fun donkey conga was this game where you play with bongos it was like a bongo controller 
What? Yeah, so you have you have this there. Let me just show you what it looks like. But this was like my first real introduction to uh, Donkey Konga. Oh God! I just googled it. <laughs> yeah, are you googling it? I'll just show it. Yeah, on. I'll show it. On yeah, yeah. To everybody else on YouTube. Yeah, so it's like you have these bongo controllers, and so what you would do, it was only um, there was four different. Um, like I guess rhythm attacks you would need to do. So it was left, right, together, and then you could also clap. And there was a microphone in the middle that would hear your claps. <laughs> um, but the you know how like the Wii, I don't know if you ever had a Wii where- Yeah, yeah, you, I did. Like when you're playing Wii tennis, it's just like it, no, nobody's actually swinging. People are just like doing the little, <laughs> you know, like jitter with the oh, remote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the clapping wasn't even like nobody ever. If you were good at Donkey Kong, you didn't clap. You would just tap the sides of it and that would register like a loud noise inside the controller that would register as a clap. So... Anyway, yeah, I got I got pretty good at Donkey Kong. It was all like the cover song, so every single song you played just sounded like way worse than the originals, and they were only like half the song for some reason. <laughs> so that was annoying, but um, it was really fun. And then I moved on to Guitar Hero. So always been this been, this yeah. Donkey Kong game looks like it's like really clunky. <laughs> oh, it was horrible. It was like. I mean that that was basically a mobile game on a console. It was yeah. It was bad. I don't know if I ever played this. I I want to say it looks familiar, but it's Nintendo, so I, a lot of things look familiar. But yeah, it looks really clunky. <laughs> I want to play it. Yeah, I'm yeah. interested. It has my attention. You know what's really funny? So there was um, you know, the song "Let the Rain Come Down." Like, but who was that? Who was that <laughs> Keep girl? Keep going. <laughs> who was who was the girl that sang that? I can't even think of her name right now. I have no idea. Okay. That song, <laughs> that that song is on Donkey Konga. I think it was on Donkey Konga too, maybe. And I had all the Donkey Kongas. <laughs> anyway, but you're a big fan. But what what's funny is I listened to that song the first time through Donkey Konga, and it was a cover of it. So when I heard the original, I thought the original sounded like crap because I was like, "What the heck? Like this isn't the this is this doesn't sound like the original I know from Donkey Konga." But the the Donkey Konga was the cover. So whenever I want to get like the biggest throwback of all time, I will go and listen to the original Donkey Konga covers for the songs that where that's the first time I heard the song. And those are like the originals for me now. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's like yeah. the originals to you. Yeah. And they give me like, so, I don't know, they make me want to cry because it's just like so, so nostalgic. <laughs> but I feel like yeah. I've been exposed to this whole new like music rhythm game that I didn't know existed. And like... <laughs> It's, I feel like I need to go and investigate. You, you need you need to play it. Oh, the Is bong this playable? Like, I uh, guess. you could probably just I don't know if you have like Craigslist, just some some sort of I, thing I, where you just buy new stuff. <laughs> but I'll be honest, if you buy a Donkey Konga controller, like a bongo set, it's probably broken. <laughs> Those things yeah. are really cheap. Yeah. Yeah, so, I can't imagine. Like I said, it, it looks super clunky, so I can't imagine the equipment was like anything to write home about. You know. Yeah, funny story though. Like we we had like three bongo sets or something. One of them completely broke, and then we had one that was like half broken. So whenever you would do a duel with somebody, like somebody's just getting fucked over completely because like one of their bongo pads like just doesn't work. You would have to literally slam it. I mean, you would have to put some force into it. So, so is it like a multiplayer game? Yeah, you it play could, with people. Mm -hmm. It would be multiplayer. Like here's a picture. Um, just like you this one this this would be I, i'm pretty sure you could play up to four people uh let me send you this real quick so like that oh yeah i see like the lanes yeah you get a bunch of different lanes that you know what was really annoying though if somebody had a good combo going what you would do is you would clap and it would clap for everybody because, <laughs> because the microphone picks up all clapping so you would just mess up people's combos by just clapping repeatedly that's kind of fun yeah it was it was aggressive it was really funny so um yeah so how's so i can't imagine that mobile game has anywhere near of a community as like osrs but um maybe i mean different right because you know old school it's very much was a browser game but now it's you know most people play on the computer but yeah we're just mobile so it's like completely different audience um 
but yeah, it's quite popular. Um, I think there's like 200,000 people in the oh. Discord or something. Oh, um, it's, a, it's a lot of friends, but um, yeah, it's different. What are like the pros and cons of the OSRS community in comparison? Like, is do, are, do we have it good where we're at? Like, now that you can see another side or like a, another games community? Uh, I think the community I have are pretty awesome, to be, to be honest. But then, like, when I think about old school and, like, our community there, like, I have a very, like, shielded view on our community because a lot of the people I interact with are, like, people on Twitch or, like, people in my clan. Um, and that's, like, a very small selection of the player base. Like, a lot of my friends and people I interact with are, like, end game players um but the majority of the old school user base are like super casual right like there's so many casual people that we have no idea about that i don't know like jimmy that plays like two hours a week or something yeah. <laughs> um but i stay like so far away from like the reddit and like the official discord um primarily just because i read a lot of like similar stuff in like my day to day yeah. that I just don't want to like read about it in like other places but yeah I would say like my view on like old school community is like very different to like my day to day like when you actually work on a game yeah if that makes sense that probably gives you a lot of empathy like you said earlier like for the position that Aiza and Light yeah. hold or yeah just, definitely they, they are not just look at like, and because I get really jaded I try to sort of understand how jaded i am with this game because i am just completely entrenched in kind of more higher level players and mindsets but for them i mean they have to look at the entire game and so yeah we forget that i forget that i think it's just all about perspective really is like you know what you know right because you mm -hmm. know what you're exposed to but like people like Light and Aiza and, you know, all the other community managers, like, they, I imagine, like, they each focus on, like, a specific part of the community, um, and they're, like, professionals in their own right. Mm. But, yeah, like, coming from, like, a CM perspective, like, there is so much you need to think about and, like, so much you need to consider that it's not always, like, something that would be straightforward or, like, the obvious option to you is, like, something that we're not even thinking about kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I have a lot of empathy for the team. Um, and a lot of appreciation as well. Yeah, they do a really, really good job. Like we, I agree. We have it really good. And we also have like a polling system and just community engagement with everything that comes out. Even yeah. even the things that aren't polled, they will still take our feedback and literally value it above their own like internal, you know, discussions and stuff. And they will make changes according to that, which is just amazing. I do think the poll system is a little bit flawed. I think, I mean, there's always room for improvement in like everything we do, but mm -hmm. I think that's flawed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, people like Aiza, like he's somebody that has like kind of inspired me to be like a better CM. Um, and I take a lot of inspiration from him. I think he's awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the community team do a pretty good job of like, especially in like recent years, I feel like it's gotten a lot better. Um, but in just like updating us on things and, you know, asking for our feedback and opinion and yeah, I appreciate it. I hope other people do too. What, what would you suggest for like an improved polling or what do you think is flawed about it? Cause I also agree I it is flawed, but. There are some things that are polled that are just like, I don't necessarily think needs to go through like a polling system like if jagex thinks that there is something that is good for the game that they like wholeheartedly believing as a team mm -hmm. i don't think they need to run everything yeah. by us i agree i don't have an example to give you off the top of my head there's but... there's plenty of examples running through my yeah. mind where it's just like this is okay. so stupid to poll like and, and especially the things where it's so obvious that this needs to be changed that like anybody that would vote no to this is clearly just trolling or can entirely mis misinformed just like what what's going on here so. i think they moved it to 70 percent, right it's a pass yeah I, yeah and like i know so many people that just like blindly click <laughs> they don't they don't read they don't care 
Um, and 70% isn't that high. So. Yeah, no, I mean, we, uh, because we just have so many different competing views with the game. Like there are still, like you could, most people would probably throw a player like me into like the more purest threshold of like, oh, this guy is going to vote no to things. Um, I, compared to the larger player base, maybe I'm like kind of in there, but I am very liberal with like my thoughts on this game. Like I, I want updates all the time. I want quality yeah. of life. I want all that. Um, and, but there are those players that are super, super stern on like, no, do not make any changes unless absolutely necessary. Like this game's got to stay as charming and clunky as it can. And the more we change it, the more it's just going to turn into like some mush of just p people's fear really is like w like the purest's fear is that this game is going to turn into like rs3 basically where like everything becomes just really standardized and just i don't know but i don't I think, think that's a bad thing people, yeah there's definitely a couple of people that i feel like are like we absolutely cannot kind of you know go into rs3 territory um but then i think there's a lot of people that are like hard stuck in like 2014 Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, obviously when old school was released again, like it's had its fair share of updates and it's not what it was when it was released originally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but we're not super, super old school anymore. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some people that are not wanting updates, which is fine, you know, but yeah, yeah I'm I, somebody I, that likes seeing new stuff. I also try to respect their views as well because like, it's okay to not to be a person that opposes most updates simply because your whole view on it is you just want minimal updates. Like you like the game yeah. as is. That's fine too. Like I love the game as it was, but like I am somebody who just can appreciate like change with new stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and like the old school team are huge. So <laughs> they're going to have ideas and like things that they want to do that they think improves the game. So I'm always interested to hear those kind of things. But yeah. Yeah, some players not, not wanting to kind of move on from like what old school originally was. But I think that's fine too. Yeah, it's yeah, it's fine to a well. The the funny thing is, is that most purists that are super against any update actually aren't. Like they'll they'll say they are, but they they actually have had some updates that they've really really loved. But because they hold on to their purist view so strongly, they have to deceive themselves into thinking it's just like, like the idea of it, right? It's like the idea, like they need to hold on to this kind of like virtue of like, I've always been against all updates and all updates are like not good for the game. But ultimately when you actually, if you were to actually prod them enough, you would see that there's actually been a lot of updates that they love participating in and they love like a lot of new skilling methods that have emerged and stuff because mm -hmm. of these updates that they just wouldn't have been able to enjoy otherwise. So it's kind of, I feel like no matter what the way, I'm obviously the way forward is better updates, more, more updates in general, but they have to be like quality. Yeah. Not just churning out kind of anything. Yeah. And that's why I do think that the polling system is good for that because there's been a few things in the past where like the community of Hops have absolutely just been like, mm -mm, like, no thanks. Um, I think that's good. But when there's something that, like I said, you know, the company feels is a good thing and is necessary, I don't feel like those kind of things need to be ran by us. Like, let us know in, like, a blog and stuff, but I don't know if we need to, like, vote on everything. Yeah, one of the things, I, I want to hear your thoughts on this, because, okay. like, I've I've definitely heard Jmods wish, like, I've had them on the cast, and they're like, man, if, if only we didn't have to go through all this bureaucracy of like going getting through the players and po like polling all these things just to come up with an update that we know is going to be awesome if we didn't have to go through all that like we could get updates out so much faster and so much and add literally add more quality into it because we'd have more time for that um what would you say well this is something i brought up i'll just get your opinion on this like as i was just thinking like what if there was something where you don't pull what it is but you pull a poll to allow yourselves to have an unpolled update so basically it would be a poll of like hey we want to come up with something that's unpolled will you allow us to do this and we have to pull if it's 70 percent yes or not you know so so it's something we're like a, a significant no i get the concept yeah yeah a significant piece of content would come out but we would have no idea what it is but we would pull to even have that be a thing like what would you think 
I don't like it. <laughs> like, <laughs> if they were like, hey, yeah. do you give us permission to do this potentially, like, unhinged thing? It's yeah. like, at that point, they're holding us accountable. We've given them permission. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't want well, that. It, it wouldn't, I mean, we would... We they we would give them one chance. It would be a smaller project. We're like, okay, hey, we're giving you a test run because if this is so unhinged that it's just unbearable, like you've messed up. We're never giving you this again. The tables of town, like the community, actually own Jagex yeah. and everything they do. <laughs> I just think there are amazing things, and one of the things that um, I don't know how big of a portion of a player base uh, that thinks this is, but I I would personally like an update where. All of a sudden, one week, an update drops, and we have no idea what it is. And it just comes into the game. We have no idea what the uniques are. What if it's a boss? What if it's like a, a quest into a boss with some new uniques that we have no idea about? We don't know any of the drop rates. We don't know anything. That would be so exciting. Like that Imagine, would, like, yeah. I, I have a good example about this. Like, you know when um, Desert, Desert Treasure 2 was released and then... Um, the Awakened Bosses came out a few days later. Mm -hmm. I thought it'd be so cool if, like, they dropped DT2, we got off one of the bosses, and then they didn't have to tell us that, like, Blorva was a thing, or Awakened Bosses were a thing, like, because there was that in-game, like, message where it was, like, I don't know, like, the, the ground shook or something. I can't remember exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. But there was, like, something that happened in-game when the update hit. And I just think that would be so cool if, like, we didn't know about that beforehand. And it's just like, okay, what is this? I'm like, yes. what the hell do we do? That would have been so cool. That, like, actually would have been so cool. It would have been risky, obviously, but the because the update landed so well for like, yeah. almost everybody, that would have been it's very so smooth. Perfect. That would have literally yeah. given us so much more trust in the team if they pulled something like that. But it's like, I feel like they feel like they can't do that because everything is like, it has to be pulled and it's like a problem if it's not. But I feel like there's so many cool things that like they could surprise us with mm -hmm. if, you know, they didn't have to go through that. But I, I, totally I think agree. like having Blorva dropped on us that way would have been so cool. Yeah. No, like real talk, that would have been awesome. So that's why I think personally it would be cool to have some sort of surprises and yeah, I think we're already sort of headed down that way. I think they have given them... I think us as the community, like without even really acknowledging it directly, have already kind of given them a lot more leniency with doing things like that. And I think it's just like a fine, like it's like a sort of like a tiptoe game. Like they, they sort of edge a little forward, like, okay, we're going to do some <laughs> fun things like this and we're going to see how you guys react. And we just slowly kind of go down that route. But personally, like I... I don't mind where the polling system is right now. I think it's more of just a, it's like a standard. It's like, okay, we're just going to have this in here for looks. And because we said from the beginning of old school that we're going to do something like this. Yeah. Which is used to it now, right? But yeah. like I said, like everything, you can always improve stuff. And I just, I think there is like room for improvement there. I do think it's good that we have it. I don't know if it should be gone like completely, but yeah, I feel like there should be some freedom that they can be like, okay, actually, we're, we're doing it this way. And like, that's why we're doing it. But it has to be good. <laughs> like, yeah. It has to be a quality update and it has to be good reasons for it. But that's kind of where we need to trust the team, I think, in my opinion, to have our best interests at heart, which I'd like to think everybody that works in the game does. Yep. I agree. Okay, Mutz asks, what's your most memorable moment in this game? And what era of OSRS would you class as the best? Or is it currently in its best form? Um, you say most memorable moment? Yeah. Okay, it's evil one of two things. Um, it's evil when I got my Inferno cape. Or when I got Blorva which is a lot more recent. Um, Inferno Cape was kind of a different one or, because, like, I didn't grind that. I, like, did an attempt, left it alone for three months, did an attempt, <laughs> left it alone for three months. Um, and then it was when I got to, like, triples that I was like, okay, like, I'm actually going to go for this. And I think I sat there for, like, a couple of days and, like, got it done. Um, but Blova, I it took me about a week, um, and it was, I think it was Vard that really bothered me, really <laughs> broke me. 
um, <laughs> to the point that I like was do not disturb on Discord. Like I didn't stream. <laughs> I didn't talk to my friends. It was just me and Vard just hanging out for like three days straight. Um, so I think when I got that it was like more impactful than when I got my Inferno cape. Um, or maxing. I don't know. There's there's a few. What what was first? Was it Inferno or Max? I maxed first. Okay. I was a cheese caper. Max cheese caper for a while. No, there's nothing wrong with that. No, no. Just <laughs> sometimes I don't know. <laughs> it's just one of those things where, like, you know, like the the com the, the community like sentiment. Okay, first of all, literally, there is no. Li I mean, fully honestly, there's nothing wrong with being a max no, cheese there, caper. There really like, is not. Literally there not. Isn't. But because the meme starts spreading of like the max cheese then it's like just you just you just can't feel confident about wearing your max <laughs> cheese game it's just so unfortunate i was i was against like i okay this sounds really stupid now i think back on it but like yeah. i wouldn't raid with my friends <laughs> because i had a cheese cape and they had an inferno cape and it was like i was like i need to get an inferno cape like i'm not good enough to be raiding oh. with these people so there's really nothing wrong with it but i was like compelled to go out and like oh, get my God. new shiny cape because i was the noob and i didn't like it it's the war i can't like it's bad it is bad i got my cape early enough i, I got mine within like the first year so I never had that like super pressure because it was just so rare to even have an infernal cape. Yeah. But yeah, definitely the more time went on, it was like, uh, okay, this is getting a little bit like, like I felt bad because I would have friends that would literally burn out <laughs> because they just didn't want to go for their infernal cape and they just felt like they weren't like worthy of like raiding yeah. or doing any other fun content because they had a cheese cape and it was like that was actually a thing and people were just ruthless about it mm -hmm. i'm like oh my god i mean i've seen things where like people be like oh hey like i'll come raid and they're like no you have a fire cape i'm like <laughs> they're being genuinely serious and it's like oh my god like, so toxic not, oh my god it's, it's not that deep but yeah um yeah i luckily enough like it made sense for me when I got my Empire Cape. It was like the next thing that made sense in my account to, mm -hmm. to do. Um, but yeah, I think because I broke it up in stages, like it didn't have like the impact that like somebody that has sat there for like four months. And like, obviously when I got my Empire Cape, I was, you know, ecstatic about it because it's, it's, it's a great achievement. Yeah. But I think the mo most memorable one was, was, was Blover, just because Vard is something <laughs> he broke me almost. <laughs> Vard, I actually didn't find. I, I I think the most, uh, like the most difficult in my opinion was definitely Duke. Really? Well, Duke, I I, I like watched the Red Eye Jedi version. Yeah, I use that one too. But I didn't actually install any of the markers, so it was me just watching him do it once, and I was like, okay, like it looks like he does this little crisscross thing. Like, surely it won't be that difficult. Like, right? <laughs> surely I can kind of just pull this off. And oh my god, it was a shit show. I think I got like one HP like twice throughout it. I was just panic eating and it was kind of a mess. But um, yeah, I think that took me like 12 or so tries. Just Oh, that's not bad. I... What? I mean, 12? you also, you got to keep in mind, like I've played, oh, I nine. play this game every single day and yeah. like I'm a content creator and I've, but like for, so when, when I think of myself going through these challenges, like I'm just looking at like. A player that hasn't put in twenty thousand hours <laughs> into this game, and I'm yeah. like, okay, like this, yeah. this would be pretty difficult. I feel like, and I also have max gear too. So imagining somebody without, I mean, I guess most people that are going for Blorva probably have max gear, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Duke, I was, think Duke was brutal. With Duke, like it's the answer walk because like sometimes it triggers, sometimes it doesn't. So it's like you just have to be ready on the tick that like it's gonna spit at you because otherwise you just fall behind and mm -hmm. then you get lost in like the cycle. Um, which was like I guess the biggest challenge for me when I did Duke, but I think Duke overall took me more orbs than you. I think it was twenty for my Duke. But um yeah. I didn't didn't find him too bad, but yeah, Vard was not not friendly to me vard was very friendly for me i i uploaded my run on it it was like the biggest 
cakewalk. Like seriously, you just watch it and like nothing nothing bad was happening. It was just it was like super graceful. Like here, we'll give you a blue and a green or, and then we'll just, you know, do the swords right afterward and everything just felt really nice. And then of course my scythe was just popping off too. Yeah. My my um the one I actually got the kill on, it was my thrall that killed it. And like I've never been more thankful for that day. <laughs> than i was in that moment but yeah i like fully that one took me like three days three or four days i just like had to like i'll hook myself in and i do nothing but it and it like yeah i don't know if it was just being like super unfriendly to me i was also comparing myself to a friend who did it a few days like before i did mm. and he had like the smoothest in race phase ever yeah. like fine just a walk in the park and i was like i was like really getting to my mental i was like why am i so bad at this video game but no it really yeah. does depend anyway. on the run like yeah. if you if you start hitting just nothing and then he just starts going crazy it's bad yeah the, i think the biggest thing at least in my opinion with vard like the awakened vard is you just have to well first of all with that fight it really isn't just about like brain power it's about mouse precision like you need to be yeah. very accurate with your clicks and that yeah. is honestly a matter of hardware to some extent like if you have like th this is actually something that's pretty significant that i feel like there still are people that don't understand is like a high refresh rate monitor like believe it or not even though this game caps at 50 fps or higher if you have like some moonlight setting like you having a really, really high refresh rate monitor makes it so your mouse precision is just so much better. And then, of course, if you have like if you have some cheap mouse that costs 10 bucks at Walmart, like you're just that is not going to be capable of providing accurate clicks for you. So you have to have good hardware and that is just going to make things a lot easier. And then on top of that, the last thing I always recommend is this is something that's more like you kind of have to like concentrate on this but you when i've noticed my best performance like if, if i'm trying to perform in something quick like vardorvis i will focus on my eye movement i know that sounds like weird but i will literally look at exactly what i want to click because sometimes when i'm just playing this game casually i will just be kind of staring into space like i'll just be staring at the screen with no particular i'm not looking at any anything particular and i can just play the game fine but with something super intense like that, I have to look at where I'm about to click very precisely. And then my mouse goes where I look exactly. And I feel like locking in with your eye, like locking in with your eyes on what you want to click next is so important. I know that sounds like weird almost. It's kind of like <laughs> superstitious, but it's it's real. Like you have to lock eyes with like what you're trying to click next. And that that has significantly helped me. Yeah, I think, like, things like Awakened, they were really something you just need to focus on and, like, give your whole, like, you know, it's not something you can do and, like, watch a TV show on the side kind of thing. Like, yeah, you no, yeah, have to you lock in to to down. <laughs> what you're doing, yeah. Literally. So do you think that's, like, one of the hardest <laughs> things you've had to do in this game? Um, yeah, I would say so. Like, I'm not one of these people that, you know, have, like, solo top or anything. Um, so... Palaver is definitely one of like my biggest achievements and like that's absolutely like not easy, right? Nope. So yeah. I think Blover is my most memorable just because it's like the cool new thing, right? Yeah. So and it looks awesome. Like it looks so good. So I love wearing it. Yeah, it's pretty big. Are you you're are you GM? No, I'm not GM. Are you gonna try for that ever? I mean, you already got the hard stuff out of the way, it seems like. Like, Blorva is the hard stuff. I guess there are, like, the other annoying tasks, but... Yeah, there's a few on there that, like, scare me. Like, was it? I um, can't remember the exact name. But the five into six jabs, that scares me. Mm -hmm. Perfect top scares me a little bit. Um, I don't know how many tasks I am, like, away from GM. It's not too many. Um, but if I ever go for GM, it'll be after all pets. Mm. but i do like quite a bit of content with my friends and like when we're when we're doing content you know we'll try and knock out like the cas that we we have left so that's good i think it might not come naturally but like i would get relatively close pretty naturally so yeah i don't know maybe maybe after all pets i don't have like a strong desire for it right now mm. i'm happy being a master but 
masters yeah, the, maybe m- masters the comfy spot because yeah and you, you don't have any pressure when a new ca update comes out because like once you get gm you are forced to like as yeah, soon as the next thing comes out get it yeah, yeah you're 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 trolling if you're just gonna wait around for months like i've yeah. i've done that before quite the upkeep are you a gm yeah oh okay yeah, when, but when the TOA tasks Haunted. came out, I was just like, I'm, I hate this. <laughs> like, I literally hate this so much. There was, I literally like didn't get my GM helm back for like nine months because I was like, this is just that's crazy, this is so stupid. I'm hoping the um the CAs for Coliseum doesn't take like four months. <laughs> I hope they come out relatively quickly. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. I feel like most of the time they take several months just to completely iron out all the potential things that could i don't know make it too that makes sense yeah because like they want to see like how players deal with an update right and like yeah the little niche methods that we find and like fun things that would be you know cool to do so i, I get it to some extent but i think it was dt2 took quite a while and i was like okay like when i finally get this leviathan pet like i want to be done with this this guy <laughs> forever <laughs> so <laughs> let's kind of speed it up a little bit that see that when I was watching you do Leviathan, I thought you were just like pretty much average luck pet hunter. So like you went dry on that. I'm like, oh, okay, like I Daisy, like she she grinds. So yeah, I I really spooned Leviathan. I got it like 83. I want to say that's awesome. Yeah, but then the rest of the grind is like, just get me out of here. I'm like I hate this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like this is so stupid now. And I did end up spooning the last two. I finished before 800, which is nice. The whole log. Uh yeah. Besides Virtus. That's awesome. I mean, that's fine because it's shared, right? But yeah. I think my ring alone took me nearly 1,300. Um, and that was like my first thing. Oh, no, it wasn't. My law was. But yeah, um, the ring taking me that long or the message. Um, and then, yeah, like the drop rate rolled around and then 3K rolled around and then 4K rolled around. And I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> the help. Yeah. That is not fun. You know what's crazy? I don't know if you know this. Um, I've shared it on Twitter a few times, but I I have seven vestiges and a full axe, and I have no Virtus yet. Wow. Yeah, like seven completed vestiges, and I have seventeen ingots, and just no Virtus for some reason. I'm like I'm like almost six x rate now of a Virtus piece. Is that overall or just one boss? That that's like overall, like everything included, like seven seven um vestiges like across all the dt2 bosses mm. so Damn. yeah so if if virtus was like luckily virtus is like so unnecessary like it's nice but it's not like necessary on an iron man at all if that had been something necessary that would have been like going 6x the rate of one of these yeah, things that's crazy. would have been so brutal i got relatively lucky i think um on Virtus pieces when I was doing Wisp because I went slightly rate for Wisp, nothing crazy. Um, I'm just logging in to check how many Virtus pieces I actually have, but I got very lucky. Yeah, I have four masks, two tops, and seven for a bottom. Jesus, Wait, what's your what, what's your ingot count? Uh, twenty five. That is why I'm at 17 ingots and I have zero. That's verse. crazy. You have seven bottoms. Yeah. Oh my god, that is crazy. I think the majority of them came from Wisp. That yeah. Is... Well, they they all came from Leviathan and Wisp because I didn't get any from. Duke wow. Or Blood. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like when it rains, it's going to pour on me. Like, as soon as I get my first Virtus piece, it's just going to go, like, wild. I I still have a tiny glimmer of hope that somehow, this is not going to happen, but there is a slight chance that I could finish all DT2 pets, even, and not have a single Virtus piece. That would be wild. I How doubt. many do you have? Pets? Just one. Just one so far. But, like, I'm, oh, you'll I'm, be fine. I'm, like, slowly, you know, itching my way toward, like, the pet rates on the others slowly but there is a chance is all i'm saying like that would be wild but i think i'll be fine i feel like yeah i feel like if you when you go for wisp that that boss is the one that drops the money i made a lot of money at wisp when i i mean it it helped a lot that you know i did it on release and Mm -hmm. it was like the cool new thing but 
she's pretty nice with dropping you stuff, so hopefully she can uh, give you a piece of armor. But I mean, I am. Yeah. Let me just look, because I'm 746 whisper already. Two vestiges. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. No, no. I, I've literally finished a full axe. So, like, I've done... and, and Yeah, and, you've and done I, a fair amount. Yeah, but still, there's no way I'm going to get, like... But if I were to get the pet early, like, if I were to get it in the next 100 and I don't have Virtus, like, oh, no, like, it's getting closer, but... <laughs> Uh-oh. I love Whisper's drop table, by the way. That was definitely the boss, I think, that grew on me the most. When I first started Whisper, I hated it. I was like, this is so dumb. Why am I having to go to the Shadow Realm like a bajillion times? <laughs> and then like, the, yeah. I feel like the drop table really made up for it. Like, it just feels so rewarding. I had such a personal hatred for Wisp um, when it came out because in the quest, I struggled so much because I didn't realize the like, the little fragment that the quest gives you like throughout that whole portion of the quest that like, you actually need it for the boss fight. Mm -hmm. So I did like all of the Shadow stuff, like not using that. I like, made <laughs> 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 it's so difficult for myself and i was so confused because i was like why you know why is this taking me so long like i'm watching twitch streams like i was watching clipper at the time he breezed for a bit i'm like okay seriously like why am i struggling yeah. and i noticed this little fragment thing i'm like okay great I, I found it but yeah the drop table is pretty awesome and it was my favorite dt2 boss um, yeah i really I, enjoyed that one it's fun i've definitely it's definitely grown on me like i actually really enjoy it plus once you get good at it like you literally just go in there with like yeah. 15 prayer pots and you're just chilling mm -hmm. you don't need any f and you literally heal up like even if you make mistakes you just heal up over time like it naturally heals up so it's a very fun boss yeah it's so chill i also like duke actually grew on me a little bit i despise i still like there's aspects of duke i still despise like the shadows on the ground yeah i just hate those so much they like, just just stupid it's just so the annoying thing it sounds really silly, but like on Duke, I really love like when he spits acid at you and you like run across, mm -hmm. um, but you hit it like in the middle. So like you you're running, but you do like a side swing. Yeah, yeah. It, that's so satisfying to me. Yeah, it is. And and they've time they made it so nice that they've timed it so you can always get that swing in. Yeah, it's super satisfying. Yeah. It's yeah. W the worst part about Duke is like. You get hit, like, the, literally, like, I will want to log out if I get hit <laughs> by, like, two shadows, fine, and then I get hit by a gas because I've now mistimed everything else. It just, like, ruins the whole trip before it's even started. I know. And it's like, okay, like, I'm just going home. <laughs> I know. And, and, then, and then you run over to Duke and you hit two zero BGSs and it's just like, okay, can I just, like, leave this place? Like, I hate this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so bad yeah vard was vard was fun i spooned vard i got two old tours within like 90. i can uh okay, i can so beat that what i um so what not happened? on not on not on that but okay. i so when i got the wisp pet yeah um i got the wisp pet and then vard was next on the list so i killed wisp got the pet geared up for vard went and killed vard got the pet <laughs> <laughs> that's kill. What? Wait, yeah. wait, so back to back kill, a uh, back to back pet, yeah, basically. Back to back kills, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yep. That it wasn't is... like a one k pet, but it was like my first like trip of like. Yeah. That's yeah. wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The the only thing that was kind of significant to that was when I was going for my champion's cape and I got my hobgoblin scroll, and then literally <laughs> yeah. two kills later, I got my zombie champion scroll, like after just two zombies. That's pretty awesome. That was nice. You have Champions Cape, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. I did that a while ago because it's um one of the like requirements for ranking up in Fo. Mm. Um, there's like different requirements of like the stuff you need to go do in the game, for, like each rank, and that is like the I think it's the Silver Star. You need Champions Cape, so I did that a while ago. But I found that really fun. Um, it's just kind of something to AFK when like, we're doing other stuff, but. I like that one. So yeah, it's a I, it looks super pretty too. Cape. I, I want the champion's max cape. I don't know if you, I Maybe. don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> Is that that came out on like Twitter this week, right? There was like some designs. Oh, it's repeatedly come out. Oh, yeah. I think Bodhi retweeted it actually. Yeah, there yeah. was something I saw this week to do with it. Um, yeah, super pretty. I just want all I'm of those. Right now. I want those like I want the like the 2000 CMs, 2000 Tobs, and the 1000 LMS win max capes as well. Where 
they are literally just max cape there's no additional stats but they have a unique look and you can actually utilize them as your max cape like that and the champions cape i want that too but it just acts as a max cape that's just i, I want that so bad. i just want i want some sort of customization like I, the red is so boring now at some point there needs to be a pink max cape like we need to talk about it it there has to be a pink max cape for the I'm, ladies i'm 100% um, you know. down I'll like just <laughs> let us customize like why can we we can customize our hair colors and everything why can't we color customize our max capes isn't there like 20 or thirty thousand max players now there's a lot yeah like come on i wonder um, like how because like I, there's probably so many of those players that don't play the game anymore like when sailing eventually comes out like i'm so interested to know like how quickly people are getting their max capes back and like how many max players are going to be in like a year from now or like a year from whenever sailing comes out i this is a lot of max players currently yeah no like so i'm almost certain that they're just going to make it so everyone loses their max cape like on release of sailing and that's the way so that's the way they should do it yeah i agree and it's going to be so cool because you know everybody's lost their cape so it's just mm -hmm. exciting across the board like everyone's going to just be sailing with the boys you know <laughs> Yep. and yeah like i just i don't can i i don't see this being a super big grind like if you were if you were already maxed and you're just going for 99 sailing i can literally see um i could see probably most players that are neat <laughs> getting it within like a week or two like easily and then every but like every like normal person that just plays a couple hours, you know, a day that's already and I, I say normal players because anybody that's max probably does play a couple hours a day at least, if they're gonna be doing sailing. I can see them easily getting their max cape back in a month. Like easily. Yeah, I would say anybody that is like max and is like an active player, like this is like the new big shiny thing, right? Like everybody wants your max cape back. Like they're mm -hmm. so useful. Um yeah, I mean, it's the thing to go for. Like, I can't, as a player, like, even if I was putting my myself in the shoes of, like, a casual player, like, there isn't anything in the game at the time that sailing comes out that I'm like, okay, this is more important to get my Mets Kate back. Like, I feel like everyone is <laughs> just going to kind of fall into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be on, I'm going to be permanently on a boat. Like, that's just all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm, Me too. I really hope. Like, I play Iron Man, and I they've already made some pretty good things. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like I get kind of... I feel like I annoy people by saying this. But, like, I like when Iron Man can participate with other people. Like, the fact that they've allowed Iron Man to raid with anybody, that is so good for the game, personally. If they had made a restriction from the get-go that Iron Man have to solo everything... Like, I just, and I know I'm talking to you, who's a main, but, like, it's just, uh, so, anyway, the reason I bring that up is, like, I hope with sailing, because they're, they're going to allow other players on your boat, mm -hmm. and you're all going to be getting sailing XP for it. Like, it's just, you know, for fun. That's mm -hmm. how you're going to be training stuff. I don't know if it's going to be the efficient way or not, but I just really hope they allow Iron Man to get on other people's boats and vice versa. Like, I don't want to be sitting on a boat by myself permanently. <laughs> like, please let me get on other people's boats. I yeah, know. I mean, for me, it's like, I don't really have this perspective of, like, being an iron player, but, like, yeah. I have friends that are irons, and, like, it's, like, new, fun content. Like, I would love to be able to experience it with them, too, that, like, benefits them. Yeah. And, like, I get, like, Iron Man, like, you, you know, you stand alone, but I do think you should still be able to, like, do aspects of the game with other people. Somebody brought up recently um, on my stream talking about Duo Slayer, or, like, the Partner <laughs> Slayer. And that yeah. has like still not been brought back. It's been years. Like, do yeah, you... I don't know too much about that. Like, I've never done it or like read about it or like I guess really care about it. Yeah. But like, yeah, I I don't really know like what it is. I, I mean, it it sounds Me kind of self explanatory, <laughs> but <honest>. like, like <laughs> what is it? Like, I've never done it. All I know is like, well, all I think I know is that it was potentially broken in some ways because what you would do is just have an alt get you all the good tasks then you'd partner up with them right and obviously there needs to be some sort of balance and restrictions in place but ultimately like i feel like 
Partner Slayer. And again, like I'm not gonna try to like design it right here on the spot of like how it should be, but like that sounds so much fun. Like that sounds like a blast. Like just doing Slayer with your friend and going to the tasks and multiing them together and stuff like that. And like that, it it it's like we're playing in an era now. Like it's 2024. Like do people are people really that butthurt about a potential? And again, we got to like minimize these kind of abuses that can happen. So you have to design it well. But I don't even think it's the worst thing in the world for there to be a slight advantage occasionally with Partner Slayer where you do get like another smoke devil task or something that's like something that would be broken. But again, like minimize the abuses as much as possible through balancing and bringing it back. But I just feel like that would be that'd be kind of fun to see again. Partner Slayer. I don't know. All that's like going in my head right now is like, do you know what I mean? Like hellhounds with your friend? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how fun is that? I mean, I mean that. I mean, it's better than doing it alone. You know, like that's, that's what I think. Like the thing is, like being able to like duo hellhounds. Like somebody out there, that's gonna be like the peak of that week. Oh, like hanging yeah. out with their friend. Like no, I, like I've been doing a lot of Konar Slayer lately because I'm trying to get my final dusk piece. I've been like slaying on stream and I'm like on and I know I'm an Iron Man, so partner slayer is probably not even gonna work anyway for irons. But I was like, I'm not gonna lie, I would actually be having significantly more fun right now if I had somebody alongside me that was slaying with me and we were doing tasks yeah. together. Like this would be awesome. I'm not yeah, I'm not I like trying it. to like sweat out XP. I'm just trying to like chill out, you know, and get some Konar keys. Like this would be so much fun. It's just nice when you can do the things that you enjoy in game, like alongside your friends. Like for me, like one of my biggest motivators in hunting pets, especially the new ones, is like I a bunch of my friends hunt pets too, mm -hmm. and we kind of like race to them. Like you know, it's completely random, and whoever gets it first gets it first. But like we will just like set out to like see who can get it first, and it's like always so fun because you're doing, even if you're not doing it like together, like you're kind of doing it together kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, but I find that so fun. This is kind of random, but what are your thoughts on bank presets? Um, I don't use them. No, 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 so, not, 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 not like bank tag layouts. I'm talking about like presets from like RS3. Yeah, the ones where like, like don't I, have that already, like. No, 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 no. I'm talking about something where like, it's like a one click, your gear is loaded out. Like you're just boom, oh. you're, you're in. Um. Well, we have something kind of similar, right? Because we have that thing where it's like you can like lay out your bank to like have your gear and your pots and like certain spots for whatever you're mm -hmm. doing. So that's kind of like what I have in my mind. But like one click, I mean, I don't know if it's like detrimental to anything. Like who loves gearing? Yeah, it takes up <laughs> time. Um, but like I don't use that like one where it's like you can make the like ones for a specific whatever content you're doing. You actually don't use bank tag layout. <laughs> no, that is no. wild. <laughs> it takes me so long to gear. It's a problem because I've never figured it out. Like, oh I've never God. taken the time to think, how do I do this? I, so I, I will, just gear from my gear tab. You need, I, I will literally volunteer as like helping you with that. Like that is so <laughs> essential nowadays. You can't be, you can't be living in the caveman days still. Like what are you doing? <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I have the ones where it's like, you know, you can make your own little tag for like yeah. whatever you're you know if i made one for the wife and then i put my little i think you're in there but like it won't be in order for me to like click in like oh. a specific like line or rhythm for it to like perfectly line up in my inventory you need like, to do that i have to reorganize that myself <laughs> it, it takes a little bit like it takes you know a few minutes to just set up and i will like kind of theorize like i'm i'm clearly wasting time initially but as soon as it's set up it's just like, oh, it's such a breeze from there on out. There's no more thought. It's just, you just My gear. friends use it and I, you know, like they'll be sharing the screen, I'll be watching streams and I'm like, hmm, must be nice. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just don't, I've never yeah. taken the time to figure it out. So maybe that could be my homework today, I don't know. Yeah, that definitely should be. But there's, <laughs> there's a different, so I was talking to like Alkin a couple, I don't know, a year and a half ago or something. He's very, very pro bank presets where you get certain presets and you literally, it's just a one click, full on geared up inventory ready to go. So you just go to your bank, click once basically, and you're set. 
And I don't know what the limitations would be. I don't know if it would just be like, you only have like five bank presets or you just have unlimited and you can set them up for anything. Or if you have to pay for them, like kind of like bank space. But the, I guess the reason I ask is that I want to kind of get like some sort of player sort of consensus or just like understanding where people are coming from if they have strong opinions on it. Yeah, I see what you're saying with, like, the one click, and, like, I can, like, see it in my head when I'm thinking about it. Like, I don't think it would be a problem, really. Like, I don't... I mean, you're saving, but for people that use the other thing, mm -hmm. like, 10 seconds, like, it's not game-changing or, like, broken, in my opinion. It's just, like, a nice, like, quality of life thing. Um, <laughs> Is there a bad side to it? Have people... The... Well, the, so, so the pros are like what you say, like you're just, you're not having to spend time just spamming in your, in your bank, gearing up for something. Yeah. Um, and the other really good side is like for PKers, I'm not a PKer, but PKers just want to get back into the action. And so instead of them dying and then having to like, kind of like figure out how their new gear layout is going to be, they could just have multiple presets of like, okay, I want to, I want this loadout. I want this loadout. Like, let me just go and, you know like leave the bank as soon as possible and start enjoying the game again. And it mm -hmm. would be the same thing with any sort of like PVM or like, especially if you're a clue hunter. Now I will say some of the downsides are you like, it's the only real downsides I can honestly see is one. It's not OSRS. Like people can say this is an old yeah. school. Um, I mean, it is a, what am I saying? A devaluation for those that have spent the time to <laughs> have their banks nice and clean and organized. And so now you're devaluing that. But again, I don't think I mean, that's... it can still be nice and clean and organized, yeah, right? Like yeah. you can still have that. It doesn't, it doesn't take anything away from those people. Yeah. Um, so the, I mean, there's probably a fair few other downsides to it, but I don't know. It's just like I, I think to myself because I'm definitely one that's like proud of how much I've organized my bank and how efficiently I can just gear up with things because I've spent the time to get to that point. And so as soon as they come out with this, it's like, oh, well, all that time I've spent like trying to make my bank tag layouts nice and make everything super, super organized is now down the drain. But ultimately, I'm like, is, that's not that, that that should not be the reason why I'm against this. There should be an actual rational like reason why this is unhealthy for the game and i don't i don't actually see that i would love to talk to people that are very vehemently against it and then hear their takes i'm like very against that mindset of like i struggled so you have to as well like mm -hmm. it i don't know i feel like we should always be looking to make things better and you know i've said it a few times but like we can always improve um so like, the mentality of like it was hard for me so it has to be hard for you like i disagree um, it's just I don't know how many people out there are like I spent hours organizing my bank so you shouldn't get this cool perk. I mean I'm sure there are people out there that would say that but I don't know yeah it's just kind of difficult because you do have things where people are proud of their achievements yeah, like definitely like especially if you were to do something like I don't know to this is obviously not a fair example that I'm about to share but imagine like Blorva was just made like significantly easier just for some reason and it's like well mm -hmm. the argument is well you guys you had to suffer so i didn't it's like well there was some achievement that yeah now we're taken away from and that is like a difficulty yeah that mostly doesn't fall in line with just banking <laughs> quickly but there are some activities where that is part of the skill ceiling is like banking quickly and like for example room crafting like if at at some point not really this isn't really the case any longer because we have like the colossal pouch and things but that was part of the skill ceiling was being able to bank and doing lava room crafting like efficiently like just i'm really good at bagging my essence you know and then running and then <laughs> clicking my dueling ring quickly and even though you know most people would just you know just think that's really silly there, there's like actually like a player base there's part of the player base that really deeply cares about that and that's part of the way that's part of the reason they enjoy the game is because of little micro efficiencies mm -hmm. you can have. And so we have to, somebody as like a community manager, like I use as like, you gotta like see every angle with these things. That's whenever I see updates that come out, I always forget about like the UIM and the role players and the PVPers <laughs> yeah. and the peers and everything. There's like, so there's, many different people. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely agree that like, the you know, saying that I don't think the mindset should be like that is like 
some things definitely have a skill side to it and like some things if you make changes would be devalued in a certain way um maybe i'm just not like a bank fanatic to like really understand people like i know it's just an example um but yeah like the rune coffee thing is like really niche there's like one thing i've learned about this game is there is like so many niche communities and there's so many different things you can do that like people like fall in love with mm -hmm. yeah no it's it's kind of uh it's like up in the air i don't think and one of the things i actually respect about the old school team is they never make like super super rash decisions like they're not gonna mm -hmm. just change well i guess when i say that like they have there's actually some some examples of that but mostly they don't make significant changes they it's very long term like they'll make changes long term and that's the healthiest way to go about it because like clearly the game is not in a broken state we're actually we still haven't covered mutt's second question which was what era yeah. of osr is, is the best <laughs> would you consider but no i mean I, I feel like the game is in a great state and making drastic changes so quickly would be potentially devastating well, i think it was just recently that RuneScape hit its like highest like concurrent user count, which mm -hmm. is like crazy because the game has been around since forever. Um, and like whenever I tell people that you know I play RuneScape or you know I stream RuneScape, they're like, RuneScape still exists, and it's like it's actually it. like it's probably healthiest. Um, but yeah, best era, I don't know because I, I I would say I like it now, but like I said earlier, like I am somebody that like welcomes change and like tries to find like the good in it i guess um plus like to compare i played runescape when i was like super young um in like 2007 and then i like stopped playing and then i came back like five or six years ago so i've played like non-stop since like 2018 or something but like i don't know it's always been like very gradual change um I would say, yeah, I don't know. I like RuneScape as it is. I'm just a fan. Yeah, like whenever I think, because I loved 2018. 2018 was such a yeah. good year. That was... I was like super noob in 2018. So it's hard for me to have like the same perspective on mm -hmm. like RuneScape as like I would now if I was like had the knowledge and like was at the point in my account that I am now in mm. 2018. Because I was like super noob, like hanging out, like doing rub chins and stuff. Um, yeah with the bots so yeah. <laughs> i mean i was much newbier than two compared to now but yeah 2018 was just such a fun year and but ultimately when i look at it i'm like i actually like the game a lot more now because if i had to take every other thing that 2018 had like all the uh, just non-existent plugins that i'd be used to and like all the potential bugs that hadn't been patched yet and just every, everything else I'd have to deal with to go back to that era. Like, I don't, I would never choose that. Like I would choose what we have now. So that's. Yeah. I enjoy this game a lot. So like, I, I would say like now too. Yeah. Um, okay. Furry wall says big fan. What has been your favorite experience while in FOH? And just, I guess maybe a little backstory of foh i know it's a clan how how long has foh been around um oh this is like a question that they ask you to pass one of their tests and i don't know it <laughs> <laughs> it's I been around like, i think <laughs> yeah sorry ring carved um <laughs> i think it's been around like nine years or something i want to say it's oh, been wow. a long time um i know somebody very recently i think it's ring carved <laughs> The rate is like 10 years something recently. Um, yeah, it was. It was the other day. So a long time. Um, I've been in the clan for, I think this year is my fourth year. Mm. Um, but yeah, just for you know people that are listening that don't know what FOB is, it's just a social clan. We used to be a, skilling, a social skilling clan. Now we're just a social clan. You need 2K tool to enter. Um, but like super welcoming. And it's got like people of like all backgrounds. So like pet hunters and then you've got like crazy pvmers and then you've got like some skillers and like people that just kind of do a bit of everything um but it's like a super lovely mix um i love it personally i'm a big fan but yeah i've been in the clan like four ish years my favorite experience um 
they do like a lot of like bingos and you know you know what bingo is um they do like a lot of those so i think i don't know there's two things that come to mind um when i first joined the clan i didn't know anybody and i'd never hosted a bingo before but i did with somebody called fierce um and that guy's awesome he's like the most random guy you'll ever meet like he just has like fun facts like no other person <laughs> um and it was just like it, it was actually called taskmaster so it's more than just like a pvm tile it's like go do a game of vm or go do a ba game or whatever um but that was super fun just because i knew nobody and it was like my first like experience with the clan and the people in it and like it was like two weeks after i joined or something so like that was kind of where i was like okay like i like it here um but then like the second one that comes to places again is another another bingo that i was a captain for um and we came dead last like it was it was bad like our luck but like we had so much fun and i ended up on a team with like a bunch of my friends and like we met like new people too i think like that's the cool thing about it is every time there is like a new event you meet so many new people because it's a big clan there's like 400 people in there or something and you don't get to hang out with everybody um so i think like the big events are like a super good way of meeting people but that's always my favorite thing i love the events they're so fun and they're so well like ran too like i don't want to say anything bad about anybody else <laughs> but i hear things about like other bingos that are run by you know other groups of people that it's just like drama and like yeah. poor moderation and like we don't deal with any of that like the clan do such a good job of running events that it's just so fun that's awesome. and that's that's what we will play the game for so we had uh, i'm assuming your guys's bingos are not hours played but rather just luck correct like just you, yeah. you have to get a drop yeah it's usually drop based that's, that's um, the way it should be because i remember yeah. being in uh i'm trying to think actually because it's just been so many years at this point and i never after my i think it was my second bingo experience because i was in this iron clan uh called solitary it's like a pvm oh yeah yeah i remember yeah and uh, i was in there for a little bit and we did a couple bingos and i just remember like every single bingo i would just i'd get like a headache basically within like the first couple days i'm like i just hate this because it would just be me sweating something that i didn't really want to do i'd rather have done something else in the game but like we kind of like are separating like okay you do this you do this you do this and i'd always just get the worst luck like my i think it was my second bingo where i decided i was never going to do a bingo again was when i had to do a sire tile and i went like 600 dry of an unsired and i just yep. never got anything and i'm like this yeah. is so stupid like going dry is like the worst part of that bingo so um, painful especially when you're like i don't know like 20 hours in and you're like okay like seriously give me this unsired before like i lose my mind yeah but and speaking of solitary it just like really took me back to the montages that Bertil used to make, they were so good. I loved them. Mm. I was such a fan of those. There was, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, there, there was something honestly like really nostalgic and like something I deeply miss about like super early days of like, it's kind of like early Iron Man clans and stuff like that. And just, I don't know. I, I remember really looking, when I was a really early Iron, I remember looking up to Erudite. Do you remember Erudite? You probably, that was probably before your time, no, actually. I don't think I do. That was like the original super OG, like Iron Man clan. That was main. it was, this is like before there was even really infernal capes and stuff. So this was like, I mean, pretty much any high level clan was a skilling clan. Because that's just what OSRS was back in the day, was like skilling was the cool thing. I mm -hmm. guess there was like Slay Stars and stuff, but oh, I remember Slay Stars, yeah. I mean, but even like Slay Stars was like just getting Slayer XP and stuff, like you know, get, or maybe getting a few pets, however many pets there were at the time. But um, yeah, just like here, because there's a few Erudite podcasts on YouTube and stuff, and you just hear like the Giga Giga Sweats and early Iron Man days talking. But anyway, kind of going back, um, just to, like the bingo thing, like uh, when I joined Olympus. I didn't even do a bingo, but I believe, I could be wrong on this, but I believe how the bingos worked was it was literally like hours spent. 
So like there was really <laughs> because I feel like the <laughs> the majority of the players in that clan hated the idea of luck because it was a skilling clan. Well, I, t technically it was like an everything clan. It was just, but the the whole focus on Olympus was hours spent. I mean that was how you got your ranks. You would not get ranks from luck. Like all everything, and, but but they would include everything. They would include you know, your bossing time, they'd include your clue time, but it was all just hours spent. So there was no element of luck. And I believe that's also how their bingos went. And that that's seemed crazy. mildly depressing to yeah. just like sit, get your ass in the chair and that's how you win a bingo. We have like time locked ranks in Faux. So like when you get to like the later ranks, like I think Silver Star, which is what I am, is like I think the time requirement is eighteen months in the clan. But there's nothing like that for bingos. It's purely just like your luck and mm. like the board. Um, so, so you're you're getting how how does the ranking system go exactly? Is it is it actually just time in clan or is it time in game? Or it's time in clan for the time requirement, but there'll be other things too. So I think like the Silver Star requirement, I think it's. You need, I think you need Master CA, Inferno Cape, Champions Cape, and, or maybe, yeah, I think it's bronze, but it's all of those things, and then it's a year, and then silver is 18 months. Mm. So it's like, the ranks are like, locked behind time, for, for some of them, like the super late ones, um, but there's a few earlier ones that are like, not time gated. Um... But yeah, they'll each have their own like set of requirements, and it's just like it, they're all things that you know, aside from the time requirement, um, are, like things that will improve your account. So it's like things mm -hmm. that like motivate people to go for more for their account, which is kind of cool. I really like that. But yeah, there's quite a few people that have like Silver Star, which is 18 months, um, and the clan have like a lot of people that have been in there for like four or five years, or like longer than that, which is awesome because it just goes to show that a lot of people are happy here. But yeah, it's um, purely by timing clan, not in game. Mm. That's because I think healthy. you can. <laughs> yeah, you can transfer it from like accounts. So like, if you want to transfer, like, I don't know, if mm. you if I was to start playing an Iron Man tomorrow, like when I got two K on that Iron Man, like I could join and like have my rank transferred because I would have still been in the clan for that long. That makes sense. Kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, uh, Olympus was like just time. I mean, it was an Iron Man skilling clan, and it had like all the top page Iron Men in it. And yeah, I. It's just like inevitable when you're in a clan that's based on just like how many hours can you play this game? Like how many how many possible hours can you squeeze in every day to play this game? It sounds miserable. It's so. I mean, I was way more addicted to the game then than I was yeah. now and I loved the idea because <clears throat> I just love the idea of like building a super like um, impressive Iron Man account and seeing other people's accounts that were like so good at the time was just it was just cool being around them because on top of it was it was cool being around them at some point but um, it was cool because you would see these players and on top of them just knowing so much about the game so like if you wanted like top tier advice of like, hey, how do I efficiently do this? How do I kill this boss like efficiently? There, there wasn't as many Discord resources back then. So it was like, if you're in a clan that has all the new info and plus when an update would drop, I mean, you would have like the top page Iron Man like trying to basically break the game. Like how, how can we pos how can we most abuse this update that has just come out? And so you'd get all the info like right off of the bat of like, what's happening in the game like what's and that was exciting for me to like log in and see exactly what's happening and get like the insider leaks on everything the problem is scoop. yeah yeah the, and and then the problem was was you inevitably attract creatures to the clan so <laughs> there were like olympus for the most part had really nice people in it and just people that just played the game a lot just you know had very few other hobbies and just you know they but they're still kind individuals but then you would get the people that are really just chronically in chair, just bullies, just wild, uh, weird thought processes. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like this happens in like a lot of clans. And I feel like there are a lot of clans, especially like, and I'm thinking of like skilling ones when I say this. So mm -hmm. like, 
you know, solace and on the air. I think, like, they've had a few people previously that's, like, have been questionable um, and done some questionable things. Um, and I think, like, that unfortunately has, like, a negative effect on, like, the clan and, like, Holtman, it's just, like, one or two people that are, like, you know, toxic or crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it's kind of the same everywhere. Like, it's just being people. online and b yeah, remaining it, it anonymous. Is. Yeah. 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 No, but you're right. And but the the problem is is like at least how I saw it in Olympus was you have what you have a few guys that become kind of cliquish and they just want to harass people and just pick on people and just be an asshole basically and that's kind of like their that ends up being their personalities like how how mm -hmm. how much can we bother other people, you know, cuz we're just chronically on we're going to be logged into this game for 19 hours a day so like mm -hmm. how how can we have fun? <laughs> You know, with just uh, treating, other, just mistreating other people. And then when that becomes like, quote unquote, cool, like, oh, like, you know, these people are just bullying others. Like, this seems acceptable. Then you have the other people that don't have as much like self-esteem and they kind of like join in on that. They're like, oh, this is how yeah. you become cool is like, let's just be an asshole. And you kind of see that with other skilling clans as well. I mean, Solace is the greatest example of just... I'm I'm sorry, but like I've dealt with just total creatures from that clan, and I'm not saying everybody in there is like that. But when you start, when when you don't like punish, or when you don't have any sort of like moderation on that, it just builds and builds and builds, and it, it just there's more toxicity. And then the toxic people that like already like that will gravitate toward that clan, and then you just have a bigger group of toxicity that's just like I don't know, so. I think it just goes back to people being a lot more comfortable like online like nobody knows who you are like mm -hmm. you know you sit in your room and you're behind your monitor and you're playing the game that you love and you know i couldn't imagine for me personally waking up and think hmm who do i want to bully today like that's just a thought <laughs> no. that would never cross my mind but yeah. i think yeah people are just you know and it's definitely not everybody but there are some people that are just very comfortable in you know being mean um yeah. but you know you're gonna find that on runescape you're gonna find that offline and online and everything yeah, yeah. okay <clears throat> um jake asks <laughs> do you play any other games outside of rs and also what's your favorite flavor muffin um <laughs> hi jake um i i mostly play runescape um you know we touched on earlier that you know i work in in games so i, I play some mobile games um, whether it's the, you know, the games I work on or games I'm like, interested in that, you know, are kind of similar to mine or ones that maybe I'd want to work on in the future. Um, mostly RuneScape. Um, obviously Pokemon games, when they come out, I'm a big Pokemon fan, I've played every game. So, you know, when they get released every like year or two years, I think it is now, I'll go and play those for a few months. Um, I find this so fun, but... I've been trying to branch out a little bit more recently. Like I played Baldur's Gate. I don't know if you've played that. Mm -mm, I saw it. I, I saw it's so streaming. fun. <laughs> it's so fun. And like that's like completely out of like anything that I've played in like recent years. And um, you know, my friends were trying to get me to play it for like a few weeks before I like was like fine, like I'll play it. Um but we sunk like it was like I was like at work and it was like three PM and I'm like, oh god, I can't wait to finish <laughs> playing Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Um, but that was just like so weird for me because I haven't had that in so long. Like usually that's me with RuneScape because I love this game. But yeah, um, mostly RuneScape. Branch off to a few things sometimes, but I always come back. <laughs> but I mean, it's the same with everybody. Yeah, um, I, I definitely miss that. I miss like wanting, like just super, being super addicted to a game other than RuneScape. That, yeah. And I have not experienced that in so long. Yeah, me too, before I started playing that. And then... Yeah, it was getting to the point where, like, and I, I'm very lucky because, you know, I work in games, so there's a lot of people that I could talk to at work about these kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, like, it was a cool new thing. Like, I think it won, like, Game of the Year or something. Um, so, like, everybody in work were playing it. And I remembered, like, reading one of our chats, and, like, everyone is, like, during work hours, like, I can't wait to come play, like, this game after work. Or, like, you know, this is where I'm at. Like, where in the story are you at kind of thing. And it was just, like, so... I was... I love that game. Like, I, I still have only done, like... 30% of the story like I still need to, there's a lot more for me to do but that was like the first game in a while that I have like broken off and played something that isn't RuneScape or Pokemon um it's super fun 
I'll have to give it a try because I, I, I would watch people play it. It's just, I don't know why. It's like, I just feel like I'm just not built as like a, you know, like the default gamer. If I most people, like my, my yeah. older brother, he's a couple years older than me. He loves just console games and any sort of PC game that comes out and he'll play it for like a couple weeks and then move on to the next game. And I just have never been that way. It's just like, I, I would almost want to, like, I'm, I'm sort of envious of it. Like just being able to jump on the new thing repeatedly. But yeah. It, yeah. It's never been who I, who I have been a keeper. And like when, you know, my friends were like asking me to play it, I was super against it, but there's like different like builds and stuff that you can, you can do in the game. Um, and there's there's one of them where like you can choose to like basically be an animal like play as an animal um and like you're in this super detailed like busy like open game world but you're just like crawling around as a polar bear like it's so <laughs> fun it's so stupid but it's so fun um because that's what i did i played as a polar bear for most of the time um but like there is did like you just a... gonna kill people like did you just like, yes what? yes you did like, there awesome. is like a stealth mode kind of thing yeah. so like there's i've got a clip i can show you but there's like at one point you're in this like super dark like area and like you're just this huge polar bear that's like crawling along the floor in like slow motion and it just looks so ridiculous but it's so fun <laughs> that's awesome actually like there, what was that one game that was like you're a cat and you just walk oh, around as a cat. Um, you know what I'm talking I never, about? I didn't. I know what you're talking about. I didn't play it. Um, what was that? You'll say it, and I'll stray. Stray. Yeah, stray. That was it. Yeah. Um, that. So I never played that, but I, I watched it, and and just the idea of it, like you're just an animal. Like this is so foreign. Like most of the time, you're playing as <laughs> some sort of humanoid. Yeah. But as soon as you start playing as animal, like that, even though that game seemed a lot more chill and not like violent. It was just like, this is such an interesting concept. I'm like intrigued. Like I just want to mm -hmm. play as like a different animal. That's that's awesome, actually. I There's watched a... um, oh, yeah, It's Will it. play that game for a few hours and it was just hilarious. Like he's a funny guy anyway, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, that game and like him playing it was just like, there has never been anything in that moment that I wanted to watch more than this. <laughs> like, it was so fun. That's awesome. Yeah, that that's cool. All knowing that, so you could play as a bunch of different animals on Baldur Baldur's Gate. Yeah, or? yeah, like you can be like, um, you can be. I think you can be like a beaver. Um, you can be a cat, which is super cool. You can be a dog, um, a polar bear, which is my favorite. Yeah, polar bear um, sounds dope. And there's like another one. It's like a, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like, I think you can play as like a huge ball. Um, <laughs> a ball? And that's just, just... just like, like a ball. Oh, um, oh, okay. Yeah, and, <laughs> and that is just ridiculous. Like, it's so big. Like, that is awesome. <laughs> it's fun though. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, yeah. So, what's your what's your favorite flavor muffin? <laughs> that's the important one. Um, what a question. That's a loaded question. Um, honestly, I think if I'm gonna have a muffin, it's gonna be a chocolate chip muffin. I'm I'm a chocolate kind of person. Mm. I think I don't know. Like, I would love to be one of these people that like loves like blueberry muffins because they always seem like a hot topic in like the muffin world. But yeah, not for me. Really? Is it just yeah. is it like a texture thing or what? I don't know. I just I'm just a chocolate chip muffin kind of person. Okay, so it's, it's not like there's anything muffins very often, but like it's not like there's anything wrong with blueberry muffins. You're just like you'll always gravitate toward the chocolate thing. Yeah, I feel like if there's ever like. I don't know if you're like watching a movie or like in a video game it's like the muffins are always a blueberry one it's mm -hmm. like you know but yeah. i'm just not one of those people i'm surprised there aren't, aren't muffins in runescape you know like when can we bake a muffin maybe they should pull it yeah sir don't even pull it just <laughs> introduce it already exactly what is your favorite favorite um so i don't really eat mu i mean i love muffins but i just if I don't, that, yeah, I don't like, really go on often. Yeah, like if, if I'm getting a muffin, like that is like probably like peak depression where I'm just like, I'm just going to ruin my oh, day God. by just eating a, eating like, uh, and the thing is I won't just eat one muffin. I'll eat multiple muffins. <laughs> I'll just keep eating them and I'll be like, well, my day's ruined. I'm going to go lay in bed and just like, you know, but on like when I was a kid, we'd go on campouts and um, 
we'd have people bring like Costco muffins. So we just get like this tray of ma these. I don't know how big the muffins are there, but like these ones, these ones are like 800 calories each. I mean, they're just like fat, dense <laughs> muffins. And they were always super, super moist and there'd be like a double chocolate chip. So it's like, yeah, it's not even just a chocolate chip. It's like a double chocolate chunk. So the muffin itself is chocolate. And then there's tons of chocolate chips in it. And those ones are always really good. I loved blueberry. I loved lemon poppy seed. Oh, lemon, good. lemon poppy seeds are so good. But honestly, I would probably say the best muffins that I would gravitate toward are like, I don't know. It's so tough. But I honestly, it would probably have to be something with lemon in it. I, I feel like I've had this. I feel like I've had like a some sort of blueberry lemon or something it's like with like blueberry lemon tart thing with like the streusel on top like something like that i'm trying to remember but i, f I feel like any sort of like tart sort of fruit ones i really love that sounds good i'm thinking about lemon muffins now like this is a problem because i'm not yeah. a muffin person yeah no, um, le lemon muffins are amazing i love any like sort of pastry that's lemon it well, is so good it's about, such like a lemon filling but lemon flavor stuff yeah I, I think it's just because it's it's not really strong, or at least in, in cases that I've had things that are like mm -hmm. lemony based, it's just like a nice like undertone. Yeah. Um, which yeah. is just super nice and like refreshing. It's yeah. It's like not too in your face kind of thing. Totally. Like, um, what are those? There, there's a place here. I, I think they're called Bunt Cakes. Those. Okay. So th there's actually a place now where I live like probably two miles away from me called nothing bunt cakes and okay. all they sell are gotcha. bunt cakes and, and so there's like different sizes there's like little baby ones and then they go up to like the big big ones they look so good i just googled it yeah oh. they are they are so moist i'm just gonna show for those that don't know what I'm i hate about. that word <laughs> nothing bunt um this is actually the place so yeah, just like these mini cakes, and they ha they have like frosting on it. They don't need the frosting on top to be really good, but they're just so moist. Like here's a here's one I'm looking at: white chocolate raspberry. Like that one, I'm I'm pretty sure I've had that one. Like I, I've only went to this place once, but we got like a sample pack. And like, I see a recipe for a lemon blueberry one. It looks yeah, pretty that good. would slap so hard. Oh, looks pretty good. Okay, I don't know how popular pumpkin flavor stuff is over there. Is that... It's not very popular. Damn. Okay, pumpkin. Anything pumpkin is insane. Like pumpkin pie or pumpkin cake, pumpkin bread. Anything pumpkin, I die for. That that would that would always be my go-to. If there was a pumpkin muffin, one hundred percent, I'm taking that over anything. I don't think I've ever had anything like pumpkin other oh than like God. a coffee syrup. Uh, that doesn't. Okay, okay. <laughs> let me let me also. I have to state this because there's a difference okay. between between pumpkin and pumpkin spice. Yeah. So okay, pumpkin spice can be the most nasty thing you can ever have. So, some people like there's like two different kind of flavors of pumpkin. Like some is like genuinely kind of spicy. It's like oh god, like oh, I don't know. But then there's like the pumpkin pie kind of flavor where it's way softer. It tastes more like creamy and just sweet and nice like it's just way better and that is the kind of pumpkin i love but i've definitely I, I had like I've a, had it. yeah I've, I've had like pumpkin shakes even and pumpkin like Ew. kind of like frappuccino <laughs> thingies and like it's like what is like this tastes artificial this doesn't taste right and it's bad so there's definitely a bad pumpkin pumpkin shake does not sound very pleasant that actually sounds amazing to me. If it's really? done, if it's done right, it can be in. It can be amazing. It's like completely like foreign to me. Like yeah, never had that. Like literally the best ice cream, the best like store bought. There's definitely been a, like any sort of gourmet ice cream. Like there's been better flavors, but when I think of top packaged ice cream, it's this uh, brand called Bluebell, and they have this seasonal ice cream that's spiced pumpkin pecan. So there's like little candied pecans in there and the whole thing just it did like it tastes like an ice cream version of pumpkin pie but you probably never even had pumpkin have you had pumpkin pie even ever i don't think so oh but man honestly i'm completely new to this whole like pumpkin thing oh, um 
you're missing out. I don't I know if you're I missing am. out though, because you, maybe your taste buds just wouldn't. I mean, they have to accept it. Like you, they would, they would have to <laughs> accept it. <laughs> I have no choice but to like this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let me ask you this: Have you uh, so have you ever been to America? Yes, I have a few times. Have you tr have you gone to like like Are there any places that that you remember like really enjoying like American food wise? Yes, like Chick Fil A. What? Yeah, Chick Fil A is so good. Okay, yeah, that is good. It's my favorite thing ever. So, and I'm assuming the Chick Fil A sauce you like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we recently, so we never used to be able to get it because um, I live in the UK. We've never been able to get it delivered here. But recently, there's been like talks of like them building a Chick Fil A over here <gasps> for 2025, and now you can get it like exported here. Like I can buy Chick Fil A sauce. And it is like the best thing that could have happened to me. <laughs> it is <laughs> that, that, so that good. stuff is dangerous. Like it's so good. It's it's like dangerous. Like if I were to ever make like some sort of chicken, like homemade sort of like chicken sandwich or s something with chicken, if you yeah. have Chick Fil A sauce like bottled in your fridge, like you're you're golden. Like you're, it's basically like you're just eating Chick Fil A. It's so good. Yeah. And like I will see Mr. Chick Fil A. Like I haven't been to America in about a year, but um. It's like a good middle ground of like, this will keep you going until you meet Chick fil A. It's <laughs> <laughs> not so stupid, but yeah, no, Chick fil A is definitely something I miss a lot. Um, what, were there any other places? Um, Did you go to In N Out? No, no, because that's West Coast, right? Yeah. Um, no, I spent a lot of my time on the East Coast, okay. but I've never been there. But something I do love is it's not really too much of like a food place, I guess it kind of is, um, is the crumble cookie. Have you yes. Been yes. They're so good. We don't have anything like that here. Oh my god. Um, I spent my birthday in the US last year. Yeah. And that's what I got for my birthday. And it was like, it was, do you like, remember a the flavors? You had? Yeah. One. yeah. It was like a cheesecake one. And like, Oh my god! Like, <laughs> it has no business being that good, I and know. I've just never had anything like it. No, literally. Okay, so the first time I ever had crumble cookies must have been like a couple years ago, and I, I became a fanatic about it for like three months. Like, I like every week I was buying a four pack for myself. They're so good. They're they, so good. See, the, this is the problem. I I will come across people that are so against it because they're like, those aren't cookies. Those are cakes. Like those are basically <laughs> cake. And I'm like, who cares? They taste insane. Like they're so I love good. it. Keep them coming. Yeah, literally. No, those things are, those things are, <laughs> like you said, there's no, they have no business being that good. It's insane. Like you just eat it and you're like, I'm tasting heaven. Like this is literally just the perfect concoction of sugar and butter and just <laughs> everything that you want in something. I love the fact that, because I'm pretty sure they have, like, new cookies and, like, flavors, like, on, like, a weekly basis, yes. right? And I, I'm pretty sure they announce it on Sundays. Because, mm -hmm. um, like, I found myself when I was in America, like, getting excited for a Sunday. And, like, everyone is, like, excited for Sunday because it's, like, football and, yeah. you know, hockey or whatever else. Um, and I'm just like, oh, my God, like, <laughs> it's crumpled down. But, yeah, I think, like, that whole, like, marketing aspect of, like, it's yeah. a weekly thing and, like, you know, I, I just think it's awesome they, i miss it <laughs> they they nailed it yeah no my my, my brother <laughs> found this like because my i got my little brother into them as well and so we started becoming like obsessed and we, what we'd do is we'd buy a four pack and we'd split each cookie up in half and we'd each get like two cookies yeah and try different uh, four different flavors and then he found this instagram page that would somehow they leaked the next four weeks of cookie lineups Oh so we were in the know like a month ahead of every next week that was coming out. And so there was, the, I, I think the best cookie they ever had was this like Aggie mint. It was like this, what, what was it called? Like Aggie mint or something. I don't, I don't really understand the whole, it's like some sports team or something. I don't, I don't really know, but it's this really soft kind of, um, Kind of like mint. It's not strong mint. It's kind of like a softer like undertone of mint. But it was like a cookies and cream cookie base that the frosting is like some really smooth mint. And it went so hard. Like it was like the greatest thing I'd ever put in my mouth. It was just amazing. It's just so delicious. 
And that was like, we were looking forward to that for like four weeks. We just like, to come be on. so careful with like mint based products though, because it's like, there's a fine line between this being amazing and this being toothpaste. Um, no, totally. No, but you know, know, I mean? you know, but... crumble cookies is going to nail it. Yeah. And they, oh, yeah, they I trust them. nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. I'm just going to show you this. Like, okay. It's called Aggie Blue Mint. Oh my God. Look at this. Oh my God, this looks so good. Okay, so this is like the mint I'm talking about. And uh, there, there's one more picture I'll show you that has like the inside of it. It's a cookies and cream base. It, the base of the, like the actual cookie has nothing to do with mint. It's just a cookies and cream sort of like little chocolate chip things inside of it. But the outside of it is this really, really smooth sort of just very light undertone of mint but it's mainly yeah, like I this see. kind of like cream you can see that in the color of it too like that's a good color of mint yeah it, it, <laughs> i trust oh you God. i think all that right it was it, it's just wild like it was so good oh yeah here oh well this is a copycat of it but th this is actually kind of what it looked like in the inside this is this is like a copycat recipe um that i just looked up but this is what the inside really looked like so it's literally oh like goodness. this i need it <laughs> yeah no this thing went... i'm coming back to america this is what it goes Th like. this this thing went so <laughs> hard <laughs> <laughs> that, that, i think that was the best one i ever had like i just couldn't get enough of it and uh but yeah i'm, I'm so glad you actually like this did, did you ever have Krispy cream donuts yeah, we have that here. Um, mm. I never had Krispy Kreme in like America, so I don't have the comparison. But they're pretty good over here. Um, I'm not like a huge like donut person. Mm. Um, plus, like, okay, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, because you have Dunkin' Donuts, right? Is that like a yeah. comparison to Krispy Kreme? Kind of like, like they're donut. Com they're donut competitors, but Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, though. The, okay, so how do I say this without just sounding horribly rude? Like. D Dunkin' Donuts are so bad because I don't, it's like they don't care about the quality. They're just making donuts. Like, they, it just doesn't matter how much they taste. And I feel like Dunkin' Donuts have always been made for, like, coffee. So yeah. you get a donut. It doesn't matter how stale it is. It's like it doesn't matter oh, really. Gonna, you're you're going to dip it in your coffee, you know, <laughs> and it just becomes, terrible. Yeah. But Dunkin' Donuts seriously suck. And Krispy Kremes are more like a delicacy where it's like, okay, this thing – you can eat by itself and they're so light they're so just super super sweet and this thing would just dissolve in your coffee i mean if you just try to dip it like a normal i, I don't know i feel like there's kind of like this sense that like donuts need to be dipped or something i feel like that's like the dunkin donuts they're more dense they're more just like sort of cakey they're just i don't, I don't know how to describe it but dunkins are way more of like a delicacy like okay, this is the light and fluffy and super glazed and just i don't know that's good to know because i've been to america a couple of times but like mm -hmm. i never managed to visit a duncan and like the main reason i wanted to go there is for the coffee um because i hear like good things about it on like tiktok and stuff um so i was like okay like i want to go but now i just i don't know i have no drive to go there like the coffee i'm sure there's better coffee you know? yeah but, yeah. Dun yeah i mean duncan's like just <sighs> It's like you're going to crave it because, like, it's just something about the logo. Some, like, they've internalized the logos, like Dunkin' Donuts. Like, this is something you'll really like. Like you, So if you're at an airport and you pull in and you see a Dunkin', I feel like your human instincts are like, oh, that sounds good. But then you yeah. actually get a donut or two and something, and you're like, this is so mediocre. Like, this is just horrible. We have a couple of Dunkin' Donuts in London. I've mm. never been to one, but I know that, like, you know, Things that are here and things that are over there are like drastically different, and that's why I'm scared for like Chick Fil A to come over here because it's like I'm excited, <laughs> yeah, but then it's it like you are not allowed to taint like my vision that gets me excited to like get yeah. on a plane and come yeah. to America because that is like the thing I do first. I go to Chick Fil A. <laughs> that's the last thing I do when I leave is like go to Chick Fil A. Right off the airport, just like oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, step off the plane, like where's the nearest? Literally, Chick Fil A. <laughs> Have you ever had Jersey Mike's? uh no i haven't i don't think i know what it is, is great. But... it's good it's like the it's probably like, like comparable, that... right 
Well, it's it's just like a sub place, and it's just it's yeah. probably the highest quality subs you can get for like a cheap value, like relatively cheap, like just as a sort of like a, it, it's like S Subway. I hate because the ingredients are kind of just mid and it's just not great. I am a huge Subway hater. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I just I always often I don't know what it is. I it, it's weird because there will be like a lot. There's like a lot of like deli places that will leave their ingredients like kind of out all day. But I yeah. just have such like a problem with Subway. Like I didn't go to those deli places anyway. But like I just I can't get on board with like your cucumber sitting there for like 12 hours straight and then yeah, you're putting it in my sandwich like i'm i'm not into that like, i respect people that are but <laughs> I'm no cool. subway sucks so the yeah. only thing subway does good are their cookies yes i agree with you yeah their subway cookies are great and they're cheap um but jersey mike's i mean they slice their meat fresh it's not sitting anywhere it's like no. this sort of massive thing of meat, and they freshly slice it everything's really high quality and the best thing they do about it is they just put like oil, vinegar, salt, and pepper on it. And just the, the, the ingredients are such high quality and the amount of like good seasoning, like they, they know what they're doing to make a really flavorful sandwich. That's just popping with flavor. And it's just, I don't know. And they have this like, um, kind of like spicy, uh, relish kind of stuff that they have. It's like this red sort of like spicier relish that they put on it. And it's so good. Just makes the sandwich like really good. Anyways, it whenever I'm thinking of like a default deli sub, Jersey Mike's nails it every time. There's such high quality. I just googled it and now I'm hungry. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's good. It it is nowhere near like Subway is in the trash bin compared yeah, to this stuff. I'm not a fan. Yeah. Okay. Um <laughs> most this is from YA's most enjoyable and most painful pet grind so far. Oh, um, most painful i don't know i'm not having a fun time hunting prime right now um <laughs> the last dk right the last dk yeah, and it's awful. like an annoying one where it's like because i've been hopping um and it's like you always have to deal with supreme on your way in and he's just mean yeah. um so i'm just like not having fun so like I don't know. I find a, I have a lot of fun hunting pets. So like when I think about like worst one, I, there isn't anything that like immediately springs to mind. Like towards the end of Leviathan, I was like over it, but like it was fine, you know. But yeah, Prime is. I'm not having any fun looking for Prime. Are you dry on that one yet? No, no, I'm not. I'm like 2.4k KC uh... at the moment, but I got super lucky on. Well, I was super lucky on Supreme. It was like 400 KC for him. And I think just around like sub 2k for Rex, I got him quite recently. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm not dry by like any standards, but yeah. yeah, knowing that like it's a one in 5k and I could potentially be here a while, it's just like a four that I'm just not enjoying. <sighs> yeah, that's not fun. I, I don't have any of the DK's pet yet, so I think I'm like just around like 16 or 1700 of each. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I can't expect I'll any. I'll see one soon. Yeah, yeah, like I should, I deserve maybe one coming up soon. But yeah. as soon as you get one, it's like, ugh, the DKs, like right now I'm in my optimal funness of DKs because I can just kill all three and feel good about it. Yeah. Like every, every time you kill one, it's like, ooh. Yeah. It could be, could be but fun. But when yeah. you're just hunting the last one, and that is inevitable. Like every single person has to finally deal with the last DK pet. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. <God."> Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like when i stream it like i don't hop just because like i would just die a lot because yeah. i pay attention to chat and stuff so when mm -hmm. i stream dks i do kill three of them and it's just like killing supreme and killing rex it's just like oh great like maybe i get a fun ring or like my rainbow blood runes out of this but yeah yeah <laughs> it ends no fun yeah. um most enjoyable pet a lot of people are going to disagree with me but I really enjoyed Corrupted Gauntlet. Wow. Okay, yeah. That's... yeah. <laughs> I found that fun. Did you, like, what What? What was the KC you got it on? That's... Uh, like, 350 or something, uh, Corrupted. Okay. So, like, I did a fair amount, but I think I enjoyed it, one, because, like, I didn't really sit there. It was the content that I would do, like, when I did big goes and stuff. Mm. Um. So it was like, I would do it in like small chunks, but I had like a lot of fun doing that. 
Yeah, CG, um, I have really great memories of CG, but I also got really lucky. Like I had uh, two okay. seeds, two pets, 13 armor seeds in under five. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it was disgusting. So like, I'm always like, yeah, CG is great, guys. And then you see the people yeah. that go like, there was a guy in my in my stream that literally went 3,600 for his first oh enhanced God. seed. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's 9x rate. Like, that is horrible. I was looking on Twitter earlier, and uh, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but Zandi got the pet and the enhanced in the same what? chest on his hardcore earlier this. on. Yeah. This was He's just... also screaming. Wait, this was but... just recently? <laughs> yeah, it was today. Oh my god. Is there... Yeah, I'll leave it to you, hold on. No, no, I... I, I, I you got it, I okay. It, yeah, I just... I'm scared to turn up the volume. One, there's music <laughs> playing, so I don't want to get yeah. like DMCA'd. Okay, let's see this. I do want to hear his reaction. Actual fucking yeah. oh, Very on brand. Who's that? Oh my god! I got both. Oh my fucking god! Wow. I know. Oh my fucking god! That is wild. That is so rare. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen that yet. Maybe I have on like Reddit, but yeah, I've seen it a few times on on Reddit. But it's cool to see when it's like somebody that you know. You yeah. Know? But yeah, but I really enjoyed Gauntlet. I, I really enjoyed Wisp too. We spoke about that one earlier, but mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of fun. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I think I. Uh... Like, I love Clue Scrolls, and I also got really lucky on my Bloodhound. It was, like, 180, mm -hmm. and then I got another one at, like, 600. I'm like, why? I, I really wish that, like, Bloodhound was one of those pets that I, like, had to work for because I would have just kept... Like, I'll, I'll still keep doing my Clues. That that would have been a fun one to... Like, I'm I'm low-key envious of Jace. I wouldn't have wanted to go 4x raid for it, but knowing Jace doesn't have his Bloodhound yet, that's, like, optimal for him. And I think he recognizes that, like, he's yeah. going to do clues regardless, and now he just gets to milk this pet, which is pretty exciting. I think, like, everybody else ever, other than, like, you and a couple other <laughs> people, are, like, not envious of him. Yeah, yeah, no, for <laughs> sure. Like People it, want to get in and out. Yeah. And most people do kind of have that base, like, pet hunter mentality. Like, even yeah. if they're not a pet hunter, it's like, pets are the thing that matter. Yeah. It's like usually like the rarest thing, like not including, you know, clue scrolls, but mm -hmm. you know, in like most PBM or whatever else, it's usually the rarest thing. So you get, you get the pet and everyone's like, oh, okay, cool. Like I'm done here. Yeah, literally. Friend Zones has a couple questions. So pros and cons to running slash being an admin in the VM cord. You were oh. you were a big fan of Volcanic Mine. I love Volcanic Mine. Remember that? I'm so. <laughs> um. Yeah. Um. VM Cord. I have been an admin like four years. Um. Pros. You meet a lot of new people. Um. And I'm somebody that loves helping people. So I've seen like a lot of people you know, have questions about it and, you know, it, it's like, it was particularly good experience because it actually helped me in my job. Um, it was something I did like community wise before, like, you know, I got paid to be community wise, but yeah, I don't know. I meet a, new, a lot of new people. Um, I don't know. It's just, I, I love it personally. I love VM Cord. Um, cons are you meet a lot of new people. <laughs> um, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. Um, it, it used to be quite demanding. I, um, I have a, a mod team now that are super awesome and super active. Um, but it wasn't always like that. So, you know, before we had the people that we do now, it was quite a lot. And like, I don't know, some of the complaints you get are very, very much like, do I need to be babysitting yeah um <laughs> but it's like i don't know you click the rock you get xp like why are we fighting kind of thing yeah. um <laughs> but it helped me with my people skills so there's that that's good <clears throat> yeah that, that's just double-edged sword for sure on yeah. online um 
I, I don't know if we covered this. Favorite pet. Did we, did I ask you about your favorite pet? You didn't. You didn't. What's your um, it never used to be my favorite pet until I got it. Um, my favorite pet currently is the Nibbler because it looks so awesome with Blood Torva. And, oh yeah, I like, bet. Sanguine Scythe. It's, it, it looks so good with like Max Melee gear. Um, but I wasn't that crazy about it until I got it. And I think like another reason why it's my favorite is the day that I got the Nibble Pet, like I was having like a particularly bad day. And like I'm not good at Inferno. Like I have five KC, I got very lucky. I know, surprise. <laughs> um But I think it just like it just turned my whole day around and it sounds silly because you know it's a virtual item, but mm-hmm. it made my day so much better and it just looks so good with everything. That's um, awesome. He's just a little guy. Yeah, he's cute. I love him. Do you like transmogging him to Zuck? No, no, he stays as the little Nibbler guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's cute like that. I think before Nibbler, like it was it was Vetion before they did the rework. Yeah. I don't know why I don't like it now, because you know, you can still get the old version. I just kind of went off it a little bit. It just it's, it it's, it's not as like prestigious either. Anymore. No, it's not. It's not. Um, but he used to be my favorite pet. And then before Vetion, it was the gym bat when I was a super noob. I spoke about like red chins earlier. There was a reason mm-hmm. I was there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he, he's cute. I don't have him, but yeah. But it's still one of your favorites? One of my favorites, yeah. I, 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 those were actually, so my top three pets for a while, I probably said this like years ago, or maybe like some ramble or something, but I yeah. I know like, what they are. Do you? I don't know. I don't think I know what they oh, are. Oh, oh, like no idea. I, I thought you, I thought you said you did. Um, no, no but it was it was actually Nibbler was my first. I th- I think, I think Nibbler is still my first favorite, and I'm I agree with you that Nibbler is better than the Zuck form. And then it was Vedion. Vedi going for Vedion, I got it at like just under five hundred initially. This is like before Wildy weapons were even out mm-hmm. yet, and so I yeah, was just yeah. obsessed with it. I was like, this is the best thing ever. Yeah. And then I think my third one was, and this is again, like speaking of like 2019 era, like there wasn't as many pets out, but it was definitely transmog um, Cox, like that omelet. Like, and I think it was Vespula. I think Vespula was my favorite, like the little bug. Uh, but again, this was before there was even hard mode Tob out and stuff. So nowadays, I don't know, like honestly, the... I think part of the reason I mentioned this earlier, like I think part of the reason Duke has grown on me is because it dropped Baron, and I love. Yeah. I think Baron's just so adorable. So like I want, I want to get Baron. And um, that was the reason I went for a Duke pet first. Like yeah. the pet is so like uniquely it's so awesome. Odd. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like what are we doing here? But like, <laughs> it's so weird. Like what is this thing? But I want that pet really, really badly. And um, you know what? Also, one of my favorites is Kraken. Really? I love Kraken. It's not prestigious at all. It's probably the most common, one of the most common pets. It's definitely of all time. one of them. Yeah. But it's always festive. It's it always has its Santa hat on when it's appropriate. I was gonna say the Santa hat like makes everything so great. Like I, I love the party hats on KBD too. Like that's awesome. Yeah. Um. Kraken. Yeah, the, the Santa hats are such a like fun addition. I like I love it. it. I'm a huge fan. Whenever it's like holiday season, I'm like, am I a little? Mm-hmm. I always have my Kraken out. <laughs> um, and the thing is, is Kraken is just so. It's so adorable because it looks like it was made on Microsoft Paint. <laughs> like it literally, <laughs> like if you actually just analyze what you're looking at, like its mouth is just a bunch of triangles. Like it's just like, <laughs> who made this? <laughs> who who finalized this? And it's just so funny because it, like literally Kraken is something I could see like a nine-year-old drawing and just squiggly little arms and uh, just a, a round cylindrical sort of head with a circle mouth and triangle teeth. Like it's just... It's just cute all around. And then and the best part about it, in my opinion, is it's small. It just it's really, really small. I one of the things I hate about the Temporos pet is that it's so big. It's like yeah, obnoxiously big. big. If if that yeah. thing were to have been Kraken size, that would have been one of the greatest pets of all time. 
but instead it's just obnoxious. Its arms are like protruding out of its actual tile range. It's like, come on. Most people like big pets though. I don't know. I find big pets quite funny. And like the first thing that comes to mind is when I think of Scorpio pet, because I think it's like three by three or something. But like if yeah. you stand on it, it like the pet doesn't know what to do. Like it doesn't know where to move. <laughs> he kind of just like maneuvers underneath you. Yeah. And like I love doing that. It sounds really lame, but I love standing on on him in my spare time because it's so funny that like it just doesn't know what to do. Yeah. The, um, the so most anyway, odd, the like, most odd pet because Scorpia Scorpia looks like it's like a one by two but it's a two by yeah. two, and there's the the most odd pet I think is KQ because it has two forms one of them's a one by one and one of them's a two by two. So like the crawling version is a two by two and the flying is actually a one by one. I thought they were both two by twos but they're not. So you transmog it and it freaks out. Um. And the best pay, I'm going to actually show this on YouTube real quick on everybody's end. You're not going to be able to see this. But if you go to, if you go to Duradell, um, you know, it's like you're, you're on this small platform talking to Duradell. And if you summon a two by two pet, it glitches. It like, it's just like your pet goes off the edge of the world. I'll, it's just hanging off. Yeah. Hanging like, let me, let me, how do I do this? I'm going to stand over here and I'm going to drop it right here. Okay, wait. It, it only happens some of the time too. So you just got to get it just right. Come on. Come on, little guy. There we go. Now he's off the edge of the world. And if you run, so obviously you can't see this, but now he's off the edge of the world. So he's literally just walking on air right now. <laughs> and it's just so cute because he's like kind of following you, but he's just like floating. So any sort of two by two is just awesome. But yeah, like I, I mostly like small pets, though. Um, I do, too. I think to. the Nibbler is, like, a he's, like, a perfect-sized little guy. Yeah. I love I, his animation, too. I actually wish he was a little bit smaller, but... Oh, you know what I yeah. also like? Mole. I love Mole Pet. I like him when he has his Santa hat, too. Yeah, that's adorable. And I like that they added the uh, naked Mole Rat version of it. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> don't like that no, don't like it <laughs> i love it this is so pink <laughs> so cold yeah. i'm not into it just take him away <laughs> take him home he's cold i really want giants we both don't have a giant squirrel i think that one's one of the coolest uh, uh scaling pads and i don't have yeah, it i love the squirrel especially with the um when you add the acorn to it yeah um I, oh Another one of the greatest pets nowadays is the Rift Guardian mm -hmm. Transmog that has the trident. What is that one called? He's kind of cool. Um, did this all... Wait. Not not the, the original. Not the, original the not the pet? abyssal guardian or whatever. No, no I, yeah, it's like the the Rift Guardian, but like the blue version with the seashells and the trident and everything. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, and because you get the transmog from. Yeah, you get um, the you get the little blue ball. Um, or, the rift, right? Yeah, like the little turquoise ball or something. Isn't the name just the same? Probably. Or is it something I different? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the transmog, nor do I have the abyssal protector. Yeah, what is that thing called? Oh, gar oh wait, wait, so what is this thing called? I think it's just Rift oh, Guardian. Oh, so right? it, it it turns it transforms the Rift Guardian pet into a Gradish Guardian. Uh, okay. Apparently that's what it's called. I didn't. I had no idea. I had no idea. I yeah, I would have not been able to <laughs> guess that ever. So that that one's awesome though. Um, favorite activities outside of the game. Um, I like to think this is like a relatively easy one, but I love going for like, I love discovering like independent coffee shops. Like, I would spend all of my free time, like, drinking coffee and, like, hanging out and, like, you know, because anyone can go to a Starbucks or, you know, whatever else. But I love going to, like, small, like, family-owned, like, cute places that, like, sell coffee and, like, fun little snacks. Um, I just love, like, exploring places like that. So, like, on, like, a weekend, I'll, like, try and make an effort to, like, go to somewhere like that. Um, I just find it, like, super calming. And I love coffee, so it's like a perfect mix of like 
one being away from the computer because I spent a lot of time on it with you know streaming and playing the game and also working um but I just find that like super relaxing are you a reader like do you bring a book no <laughs> I was gonna say I'm like creating like a I don't know like a super like I, I don't know how to word it but like somebody that goes to coffee shops in their free time and like reads and is like yeah. super mysterious it's not like that i just i just love to keep, <laughs> keep places you know yeah. <laughs> gotta have like the uggs and the glasses and just yeah. like super like profound look on your face while reading a book yeah mm -hmm. uh, yeah okay. no it's not like that i um i tried to get into reading mm -hmm. um and I, I keep trying to get into reading um i i keep going back to this one book i actually think the book i'm trying to get into is the problem because i used to read a lot and now i just can't get back into it mm. i think i need a new book but yeah maybe i will take on this like personality of you know exploring these underground coffee yeah. shops with my book you, know? <laughs> yeah, you need the book <laughs> me and the book against the world <laughs> to get like a monocle going as well yeah. yeah uh yeah no i don't really like i i love reading but i definitely drifted into audiobooks over the years yeah. and i'm always about nonfiction. like i love re either like history or just like philosophy or just any sort of like scientific sort of like read it just always fascinates me because i just realize how little i know and just learning about things is just and, and learning from somebody that is an expert in something that has spent years in that field and then writes a book that takes years to write and yeah. getting having the pleasure of like reading what he thinks or she thinks is just amazing it's just like okay this is this this is just such a pleasure like just yeah. hearing the thoughts of somebody that actually knows what they're talking about i agree with you and also like audiobooks they make it so easy for you to like I don't know do stuff around the house or like go on a walk and like you can have your attention on like other things and still be like soaking in that knowledge or like you know listening to whatever somebody else is talking about mm -hmm. um and i think it's like the perfect way of like disconnecting um i don't really read too many audiobooks you know listen to audiobooks myself but i know a lot of people that do and they they love it and it's like definitely like something that is more popular now i feel like but yeah, yeah it's, maybe maybe that's the solution yeah it's also just getting the a good book like you yeah. just you have to get because there's some books where i just it's so unbearable to finish like i'll just uh, like I'll, I'll be listening to an audiobook and it's like 12 hours long and i'm like an hour into it and i'm like i've already lost interest but you know i use audible so i pay for my books and it's like i i've already paid for this like i kind of want to listen to it and i know I'll, it's like it's kind of like this un I, I don't know it's like they're it's like OCD it's like I don't I don't want to not finish this but I know I'm not interested in this anymore and yeah. I hate it when I, I have an unfinished like, book yeah I imagine like when you've committed like I don't know three or four hours to a book and you realize you're just not into it like finishing it like you can't I guess you kind of build like this like resentment towards it like I don't want yes! to finish you but I'm going literally, to <laughs> literally it's the worst and then the rest of your listening experience or reading experience is just painful you're just like mad <laughs> like, yeah I'm just like I'm not here. I know it's like this is now a chore like this is something yeah. I have to get over with it's just yeah horrible it's a shame it turns like a fun experience like you look forward to because that's why you know people listen to audiobooks it's just like okay well, now i have to spend my next six hours doing this <laughs> like i'm not interested and then you know you don't end up soaking it in or like enjoying it but... it's it's mostly just ocd it's like i want my library on audible to show all finished like just yeah. i finished it i finished it i finished it and so <laughs> I when need i this achievement yeah like it's literally unlocking a collection <laughs> log like just let me finish this number go up um there was actually some great advice i think it was sam harris that said this some he was just saying like the amount of knowledge there is in the world like through books and stuff is so immense like you would there's no possible way you could ever read everything that you would want to read yeah and, and you so, couldn't even come close yeah and so you so you should never feel bad about not finishing something like it's it's just like you know you're not going to get to everything you want to eventually 
read and consume. So why not just move on? Like you don't need to feel bad about like not finishing something, but it's so hard to actually like internalize that. Yeah, like especially when you've like already sunk some time into it. It's like, okay, well, like <sighs> I already made this commitment. So like I might as well. Especially when there's <laughs> money on the line. Like I bought this, <laughs> like I spent money on this. Like I want to finish it, but yeah, yeah. I just, I, I resent it now. I didn't know there was this whole like collection log side of audio books because I would be the same. Like I couldn't have like a part way through like. Oh, it's the audio, worst, and like... it shows the timeline there. It shows yeah. how many hours you have left on it. I'm like, god damn it! Like, you, you, there is a way to just manually say you finished it, but then I feel like I'm cheating the system. You're, like, yeah, you're lying. Marking off collection logs. I'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I really need to get over that though because it, what <laughs> what happens? This is the worst part about it is I start resenting finishing it, so I don't so instead of moving on to something I will enjoy and I know I will, I just sit there for weeks on end not listening to anything because I'm like, well, I if I'm going to listen to something, it has to finish like, this. Yeah, it's so bad. Yeah. So toxic. Maybe you need to pair it with like, you need to find like a chore that you hate doing like around the house because you're going to be miserable anyway doing that. So <laughs> yeah, like, I just, I just compound it. Yeah, <laughs> literally. It's the only way. Uh, maybe the chore won't feel as bad. But you're... Exactly. 100% though, listening to something pleasurable and doing chores that aren't fun, like it makes it so much better. Like you forget yeah. that you've even done it. just makes anything. it so easy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Trilogy asks, what keeps you motivated on your grinds? This one's easy. Streaming. Um, I find it so easy to just like, because I stream after work mostly. So I've done like a full work day and then... Sometimes, like, I don't have the energy to, like, if I've had, like, a particularly, like, heavy meeting day or something, it's just kind of, like, okay, like, I don't know if I can, like, give myself to my stream. But then it's just, like, it, and I'm having the same thing with DKs right now. It's, like, I'm not having fun doing DKs, but it's so easy to, like, boot my stream up and kill the DKs and, like, chat to people that want to spend their free time with me. Like, it makes it so easy, especially when... Yeah, pounding is very much you're just doing the same thing for X amount of time. Like, so it, it is really just like muscle memory. But having people that like want to watch me do stuff or like want to hang out with me while I'm doing that stuff is just like, it makes it so easy to just like keep going. Plus, like, getting the collection log is something that flicks a switch in my brain. So, yeah, totally. <laughs> Yeah, that seems seems chill enough. It does suck though because, like you said, you, you're now killing all three. At least you're gonna make money from the archers' rings and the berserker rings. Yeah, but I just think yeah. like it's just so easy to just go live and like even if the content isn't that fun, like talking to people is. So yeah. totally big agree. I also find it a lot easier like. Um, cause what I used to do when I was pet hunting was I would pick like four or five pieces of content and kind of like hop between them all. But now I found it like so much easier to just pick a piece of content and just stay there until I get the thing. Mm. And then it's like, it's a lot more motivating because usually the pet is the last thing I need for like my, to complete the collection world. Um, so it's like knowing that, you know, it's green after that and then I can move on, um, is like helpful too because i feel like it drags out a little bit when you like hop content totally yeah no it just feels like it's endless you got like five endless things going now instead of one thing that's it's like because you ultimately yeah. know especially the longer you've been pet hunting you just know that it's just a matter of hours you just put in the hours and you'll get the yeah. pet yeah so focusing on it exclusively just makes it go so much faster yeah it does and like when you look back on it like there's been a few things that like because i used to I said earlier that like I don't have the squirrel yet and I don't have the chin yet. Like those were two pieces of content that I would like cycle in when like I wasn't feeling very well or like I had a particularly long day at work and like I wanted to chill out. Like those would be like those pieces of content. And now it's like I feel like I've been hunting them forever. Yeah. Um, but if I just like stuck to them, it's like, you know, it a would little still commitment. take a while. I'd but say little commitment. Yeah. It's not a little yeah. commitment. I and mean, those spelling pets are brutal. You know, <laughs> yeah, there's definitely not a little commitment, but it's like smaller than it would be if you like space out so long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Grant asks, once you inevitably achieve all pets, what can you see yourself doing afterward? 
P.S. Nessie. <laughs> Nessie. What on the mark? Um, hmm. I think one thing I've always done in the game is like I've done things that I find fun. I, I'm not one of these people that forces myself to do something if I don't want to do it because I'm just not going to have fun. And it's like we spoke about a minute ago, like you just resent it. Mm -hmm. Um, Probably GM because I like to think I would be relatively close by then and like also like a lot better at the game than I am now Um, because, you know, Coliseum and stuff like everyone always improves with like every update mm -hmm. so I'd like to think GM would be next um other than that I feel like people kind of fall into like collection logging I would like to go back and get 200 more mining at some point um so I see that in my future but like they're adding like pets get added like pretty frequently yeah and they take a long time to get so like i don't see like the end of pet hunting for me yet like i know that this is still like a pretty long commitment yeah <laughs> so i'm not really thinking about it like i think if i had like i don't know 50 52 pets instead of 42 pets like i would probably be thinking about it but it still feels so far away for me like unrealistically far so i don't know what, I, many... I guess it would be one of those things how many pets do you think there will be out when you get all pets? Like 65 or I think something? We'll be in, I think we'll be into the 60s. Yeah. Like, I I don't think I'll get all pets this year. I think maybe next year. Um, but, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't know what they have planned. But at the, like, the rate of, you know, how pets are released, like, when we got DT2, we got four new ones, right? Like, that was crazy. Yeah. But definitely into the 60s, which is, like, crazy to think about. Because <laughs> we're far away. But yeah, I don't know. I like to think like if I had the answer that now, I'd probably say GM, um, just because it's like the cool thing, the cool new thing. Yeah. I guess it's not really that new anymore, but it'd no, be new to me. It, so. it still, it still feels like it feels like the newest kind of thing. And it, the more that updates come out, it always feels like people are just reachieving it. So it's, it yeah. always feels kind of fresh. It's like a continuous thing. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's see. This is from Rafa D. Is there anything in the game that doesn't have a pet that you would like to see get one? Personally, I'd love a little transmogable Barrow's brother following me around. I don't know if I wouldn't want to go back and do Barrow's. Um, <laughs> I know some, I've seen it like, suggested a lot, the, the Barrow's one. But personally, I'm hoping it doesn't make it in, but I'm, that's just me. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is like they showed us, they've been showing us like Valamore trailers, right? Mm hmm. Um, and there is a capybara with an orange on its head, <laughs> and I want it. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, like, what is the future for, like, Valmore and pets, and, you know, if we're going to get any from that, but the one thing I would want to see from, like, the upcoming content, I guess it's not really in the game yet, but, like, almost, it's, like, two weeks away, is I want a capybara with an orange on its head. <laughs> like, that's my answer. <laughs> I just, I need it. Everyone needs it. You know what? You know what I really want. This would be upsetting to say the least for some pet hunters, but okay. this is something I would like to see: is a superior Slayer pet. So, and it has the it has the, the, it has the transmogs of all of them. Yeah, but the way you would get all of them is you would have to actually kill a superior from every single superior. So you'd have to get the superior pet. And then just, it would be a minimal requirement of just getting a superior from each of them to unlock it. And, you know, it'd be a guaranteed drop. And, but how you would get it, it was, maybe it would be the rarity of like an imbued heart or something. Again, this would piss a lot of people off because it's so rare. But ultimately, ultimately you would just get it from Slayer. And then you unlock the transmogs just by killing each and every superior. Plus, I want... <laughs> A few other superior monsters that don't have one yet like i want the skeletal wyvern to have a superior form that's a jurassic wyvern so it looks like it's like zombified like rotting flesh off of it some sort of like bigger skeletal wyvern you get occasionally there, there's still several slayer monsters that don't have a superior that should i'm just wondering what old school would be like if like you could have a mutated blood build following you around that like, would I be so don't thick. like that idea <laughs> i don't, I don't. <laughs> 
don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Le- legit that is why i want it like this would be the most coveted pack because you just get all the trans volumes of it like that would be that would be insane it would be a I, that, that list would go would down cool. to like l like one through one through nine and up down to like l i don't know how many there are there's a lot though yeah th- i think some of them would be cool and i think some of them would be kind of redundant though like if you think about like greater abyssal demon it's very much like the side pet and same with like the hydra mm, the, the col- yeah. colossal hydra like they would be like almost like the same, same as like the gargoyle, the marble gargoyle. That would just kind of look like Zarpus. Or yeah, no, you're Pest, right. Because you know, it's like very similar, but it would be way too much. It would be like yeah. one pet is now like thirty pets. Yeah, yeah how many like, are there? This yeah, a, a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That would I I think there's just a little thing like a mutated blood belt would be fucking adorable. That'd be awesome. The pink version. Shadow one would be kind of cool. He's, yeah, I would like that. But yeah, I mean that has to be a line, right? So it's yep. like it's yeah. it's so tough. Yeah, no, that that's one of the problems with it. But yeah, there's yeah, I I've, people have suggested like pest control pet. Like I I don't really want that. I don't want that either. That <laughs> what would it even be? Like one of the little the brawler guys. I don't know. Yeah, the brawler the guy... just reminds me of. Well, it literally is a Kurask recolored, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um, we already answered this. Scuffy just says, how... Oh, I don't know. Oh, I thought he said how... One. Yeah, I thought, I thought he was asking, how are, you, how are you this lucky? But yeah, how are you this lucky on pets? I, I don't one? know, but I want it to continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Favorite ice cream flavor. We talked about muffins. What about ice cream? Mm. this isn't like as, at least here it's not super common like you can get it from thai restaurants but my favorite ice cream is coconut ice cream mm. it's so good so good but it's like super rare to get it like i can't really find it anywhere the only time i could really find it was when i worked in like a thai restaurant kind of place um but it's not super common here but like it just lives rent free in my mind it's so good <laughs> have yeah. you had it I think I have, and I think it was at a Thai place, but it was a small little uh, dish. Um, yeah. I can't even remember. It, I mean, it sounds amazing, so it probably it's probably so good. It's so, like, refreshing, and like, you get, like, the little tiny chunks of coconut. It's chef's kiss, but... Do you like... Have, you? I don't know if you've had this pistachio ice cream? I've had it, yeah. You like it? I'm, a, I'm not crazy about it, but, like... It's not bad. I love pistachio ice cream. It has to be good, though. There's definitely bad pistachio ice cream. Well, not bad. Is it bad. your favorite? It would... Like I said, pumpkin ice cream kind of goes hard. <laughs> pumpkin. <laughs> I'm like, the pumpkin. Okay. okay. Real talk, though. The best ice cream I have had recently was a gourmet <laughs> ice cream that was sour cherry pie. I know that sounds weird, but it that's what it was called. And it was like the... It was vanilla ice cream, just the smoothest, creamiest vanilla ice cream with these swirls of tart tart cherry like swirls in it and then there was a bunch of pie crust all in it it was so good you can really just get everything as an ice cream flavor now it's crazy yeah you, oh in america there's <laughs> did you know there's literally craft mac and cheese ice cream now like that no, uh, name that a more american disgusting. thing ever yeah that sounds horrible ew it's yeah <laughs> i want to try it but <laughs> It sounds horrible. There's probably like a flaming hot Cheetos ice cream at this point. Let's be honest. They they will make anything and everything. Yeah. But yeah, pistachio yeah. ice cream I love. Pumpkin ice cream. Those are, those are the goats. Um, what is coconut your ice cream takes the cake for me personally? So good. Now I want coconut ice cream, I, but there's need... literally nowhere for me to get it. So. I have a bunch of Thai places around me. I, I might need to try it now. Like, you should look for it. it. I would like to know your review. I'll let you know. Um, awesome. Clipper has two questions. What is your favorite Pokemon and what is your favorite Pokemon game? He's too easy. Um, favorite Pokemon has to be Eevee. But if we're talking evolutions, it's Umbreon. Wasn't really the question, but they're, they're so close to me that this. I don't know. I love Eevee. I, I'd feel like if I was a Pokemon, I would be an Eevee. But Umbreon is like my. It's a very close second. Mm. Um, 
Um, Pokemon game is also easy. My favorite Pokemon game is Pokemon Emerald. Um, that game is so good. Um, I wish I could play it for the first time again. Or, uh, so, Pokemon Emerald was on the Game Boy. Right? I think so, yeah. Because we had Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Yeah. yeah. Those little cartridges. And I mm -hmm. remember always, like, because I, I had a Game Boy Advanced SP, the little, like, flip-up one, the red one. And yeah. I would always play, uh, I'd play Pokemon Sapphire. But I felt like those three editions were pretty much the same. Like, I don't actually... Yeah, they're very similar. I mean, they're all Gen 3. Um, okay. but, what are the main differences? Yeah. Like, is it just the Pokemon in it or what? Like, I, I'm not I aware enough. The story is a little bit different. Mm. Um, I think there is, like, a few, like, differences in Pokemon too. Um, don't quote me on that. I haven't played, like, Ruby and Sapphire a ton. Um, but I know Emerald does have, like, um, Kyogre and Groundon in it, which are the two legendaries from those two games. Mm. Um, but Emerald is just, like, such a perfect game. And, like, I was so young when I, when that came out. And even still now, like, after all the games that have come out, like, that is just the one that is the best one. But then, like, if you're moving away from, like, I guess those traditional Pokemon games, like, have you ever played Mystery Dungeon? No. Pokemon I'm, Mystery Dungeon? I've, my brother has played all the Pokemon, but I never got, like... My Pokemon extent was like a little bit of cards I collected as a kid and then those Game Boy games and that's kind of like the extent of my Pokemon experience. Mystery Dungeon is like, it's such like a different kind of game. Like obviously you're still Pokemon and like it gives you like this fun little personality test that you take at the beginning and then it'll be like, oh, you're like this Pokemon and then you get a friend who like comes with you on your journeys and you play as a Pokemon and you have to like save other Pokemon from like the dungeon and like you have to like fight all other Pokemon and like collect like little berries from the it's so fun. I, I I don't know, I'm not doing it any justice, but I was like really hoping they would announce a new Mystery Dungeon game this year, because they just had like the Pokemon Presents thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't, so eternal sadness. But yeah. Pokemon Emerald, Mystery Dungeon, and Eevee on their own answers those questions are the games getting better i for some reason like if i if there's like a new pokemon game that comes out i will just be browsing the just literally the popular reddit page and i'll see something about the new game and it's just a bunch of complaints from people like is that is that like a common thing or is this just am i just hearing all the haters about recent I think pokemon it's like games? very different the one that they brought out most recently what was it come on someone i can't remember the name of it um Violet, that one. They released it with like quite a few problems, and it's like the general style of it now is like it's very like open game world, um, and very like there's like room for you to explore, and like you don't have to follow like um like a I guess like a linear storyline. Um, so it's like very open game world. It they release it with a lot of bugs, so like I guess like the user experience was just not great. Um. But I think a lot of people that, I feel like a lot of people that play Pokemon now, like, played it, like, 15 years ago. And I'm, like, one of the people that is still very stuck in, like, I liked how Pokemon was 15 years ago with, like, almost, like, top-down, you know, characters and, it, you know, you follow a storyline. Mm -hmm. And it's very, like, samey-samey. Now there's, like, a lot of, like, side quests kind of thing, almost, and, like, side missions that you do. And, like, the story is, like, not as important as it used to be. Um, but, like, saying that, I had, like, a ton of fun um, playing the new Pokemon games, like, on the open game world, just because I like to appreciate it. But, like, being able to explore and, like... Because in these games, you can see the Pokemon, like, wandering around in the wild. Like, traditional, like, games, like, you'd run through some grass and you're not going to know who you're going to meet. Mm -hmm. But, like, in these ones, like, you can see the Pokemons. And, like, you can choose to, like, run into them or, like, avoid them. Um, but. So it's it's really just, like, a matter of preference. So It's, do you like, think... a completely different, like, play style now. Are they, are they trying to, like, appeal to, like, a younger generation of kids that would like this? Or is, is, is this just pissing off kind of, like, the boomers that really are stuck in their ways? I don't know, really, because, like, it's so hard to, like... Again, like, I would only see, like, a small percentage of, like, people that are, you know, feeling that way. But, like, yeah. 
I think it's just like technology has come so far since 15 years ago that like they can do all these things now mm. and it's like very much like on brand with like you know other big games that have like super cool graphics and like open game worlds and yeah people like choice I feel like in games so like you have a lot of choice in these games like where you go and what you do and you know which Pokemon you want to fight and whatever else but yeah for me I'm just super into Pokemon Emerald was so good I, I really wish I could play it for the first time again do you have a Game Boy still yes I do is it like still fully functioning and everything it is still Dude, fully those, functioning those things are just bricks like those things are never gonna break yeah that's, that's awesome that's awesome to have I have um like every Pokemon game Oh, uh, at my so parents cool. house it's like so awesome to know that i have like everything um but yeah it's it's in my parents house somewhere but okay. i had had the silver one i think um but yeah they're like pretty indestructible like that's never <laughs> yeah. going anywhere yeah. i mean those things were made for kids i mean kids are gonna yeah. drop their thing they throw yeah. them across the room like they're good yeah but when i got um like way early on when my parents bought us a, a game boy we had a sh my older brother and i had to share a game boy um for christmas and the within two days of having that present like that was just insane to me i was freaking out and it just yeah. it was the downside of now i have to share this thing like damn it. but <laughs> damn it. Yeah. like two days later i literally just i offered my brother like three other of my christmas presents just a bunch of garbage you know just like here like will you let me have the game boy as my own like will you do this for me and he's like yeah sure. i so need it i traded oh really him. yeah i traded him like three other things and it was mine i would still let him play it but it was like it felt good knowing it was mine so i could bring yeah, it you to had my it friend's house the time. And stuff. yeah but yeah those games oh my gosh those pokemon games and i'm trying to th what was the game that i was like super oh there was a Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Rings. It was like the first Lord of the Rings game on that game or on, on the Game Boy. It actually went so hard. I love that game. It was awesome. But man, Yeah, I've not played that game. I've also only ever seen the first Lord of the Rings. Um, Wait, you've not watched them all? No. <laughs> wow. But you've seen the first. You can judge me. Uh, yes, partially. Well, I, I wouldn't judge anybody for it. It's just like you're missing out. Like, it's just yeah. so... It's such an iconic trilogy. Like, it's just... It's, I don't know. But, well, let me ask you this. Because this... Uh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't even bring this up. Or, like, uh -oh. how big of a Harry Potter fan are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm a fan. You're not a fan? I am a fan. Oh, okay. I wouldn't say I'm like a crazy super fan, but like okay, I love that's the good. movies, particularly that's... the fourth one. Um, but yeah, when, when I, I if you're gonna ask me the question of Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings, it's Harry Potter every single time. Okay. Yeah, no, no, that's fair. I mean, you you haven't even watched all the Lord of the Rings, but like I refuse. <laughs> yeah, what you refuse? Oh, what's that? What's... <laughs> Listen, if I'm gonna watch a long movie, it's yeah. gonna be Harry Potter. Okay, see, that's a little cringe for my. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, listen, listen, listen. Have you have you recently watched Harry Potter 1? Not recently. That is a very painful watch nowadays. Try, listen, when I was a kid, I watched Harry Potter 1. That, I was obsessed with it. I loved it. I watch it now, and it is just the most painful experience to sit through because it's it? so cringe. It's it's it's, like it's made for it's made for children. Like it's like literally just purely made for like an 8-year-old. Like when you go, like this, the acting is hor hor or like horrendous. Just everything that's going on is just bad. It reminds me of because like, I was obsessed with Yu Gi Oh too, and I, um, I recently, not even recently, it's been like five years now or something. I rewatched the pilot episode of Yu Gi Oh. Oh my god, that was actually unbearable. I was like, I was tense. Like I had to close my eyes during some scenes because it was so cringe. It was so painful to listen to, and I remember just worshiping this show. And that's the same experience I've had with Harry Potter. And I understand it's made for kids, but it's like, yeah, Lord of the Rings is just on another level. But you you did say you're not like upset. You're not a super fan of it. So no, no. I offend people really badly when they are like they live and breathe Harry Potter and they, you know, they they know their house that they would have been in. You know, is that just, like <laughs> I think I was actually uh, I'm pretty sure I was Gryffindor because I actually would. I was also a Gryffindor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
I was, I was so, I had one of my friends that was in Hufflepuff and as a kid, he, I just remember he was crying because he got called. It's like friendship over. Like, yeah. you know, if you're in a different house. Well, friends, they're in a different like, house, but he thought. Find Huff, a new friend group. He, he, he thought Hufflepuff was for girls. So he <laughs> oh, was God. just, he was just sobbing. Like he was just like, why am I in Hufflepuff? And I was like, that's not that bad. Right. Aww. I was trying to comfort him, but now he was, he was distraught. But, That's terrible. No, I still like, I, I enjoy the wizarding world of Harry Potter, you know, just the whole universe of it. That's great and all, but uh, it's like. It's just a movie to put on, like, when it's kind of cold outside and, like, you're getting under a blanket, you're getting cozy, you know. It's, like, such a perfect, like, wintery mm. kind of movie. Um, but, yeah, like, I'm not, I don't, like, live and breathe Harry Potter yeah. kind of thing. Like, yeah. I appreciate it, and I, I loved it growing up, but. That's a line. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's also hard because people have such strong nostalgia to things. Like, yeah. I, I don't know if you ever watched uh, Avatar of the Last Airbender. Yeah, I did. Did you like it? Like, are you like I, a I did when it? I was, yeah, when I was like younger, I watched like a ton of it with my brother. Okay. Um, but do you but, like, like now I have absolutely no attachment to it. Okay. Like at all. That, that's one of the problems is that is such a hugely popular show. And some people have just such fond memories of listen, or watching it as a kid. And so they have this irrational obsession with it that's just like, this is the greatest anime. This is the greatest cartoon, greatest anime, whatever you call it, of all time. It will never be beat. It's the GOAT. And I was like, what is Avatar? Like, I, I hadn't really watched it. Like, maybe I had seen, like, scenes of it as a kid. But I tried to watch it, and it was just so not enjoyable because I have no nostalgia attachment to it. It's like me... Me having just this overhyped version of like everyone saying this is the greatest thing that God's ever made for us humans. And now we are just, we, this is the greatest thing of all time. And I tried to watch it and it was so painful. Um, it wasn't painful. It just wasn't as, it wasn't anywhere close to anything that I thought would be amazing. Yeah. And people just have this weird obsession. So I, I offend a lot of people by saying I'm not a fan of Air, or Avatar and I'm not a huge fan of Harry Potter. That, Huge I mean, things. everything like that, and it's the same with everything, right? It's the same with, like, movies and TV shows and music. Like, it's all subjective. Like, there's there's really no right or wrong about, like, what you enjoy or what you find interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, like, I think it's completely normal for, like, for you to love something when you were younger and then for you to just, like, grow out of that. And then, like, that doesn't appeal to you anymore because mm -hmm. you're, you know, like, that. I think that's very normal. But... That's yeah, like things. berating people. Yeah, berating people or like having like a super strong opinion, not like you're wrong because you yeah. don't like this thing. It's just like crazy because like everything is subjective. Yeah, yeah, that's true. If, if but if somebody's coming at me, I'll 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 banter with them back. You defend forth. yourself. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll defend, but it's all fun and games. I'm not actually yeah, being serious. Yeah. Like it's just. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Matt MC, MC Matt asks, oh "What brand of dish soap is your favorite?" I don't know. <laughs> um let me google this it's definitely dawn well, that's, we don't even have that here uh, like dawn that. is powerful here it's great God. super concentrated i don't know like i guess the dish soap i use here like the brand is called fairy and i like oh. the pink one <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah, it's weird. You're going to have no idea what fairy is. Matt's going to have no idea what fairy I, I'm is. I'm just imagining a bottle of fairy right now. I could just yeah, think that's, it's, yeah, it's just your standard bottle. It's like a reddish, pinkish liquid. Yep. It's Dawn nice, like, is dark blue. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Um, do you Wish think the game that. could benefit from a capybara spinning in a circle? No. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. All right. Um, what got you into RuneScape and streaming? Um, so when I was younger, kind of like what you said a second ago, when you shared a Game Boy, um, I shared a laptop with my brother, and we both played RuneScape. We were both super young, and we would like lay on the floor. I remember like laying on the floor and like taking turns for like an hour and like he would watch me and then we would swap and I would watch him. And it was just doing stuff in like our career, like talking to the carpet guy and like, running around like really doing nothing <laughs> um and we did that for like hours and that was pretty much like the extent of what i did yeah. on old school when i was younger um and then at some point i grew out of founding like finding alcohol fun and i think completely moved away from like old school and i came back when i went to uni so like i think i said i came back in like 
2018 or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I came back when I went to uni just because I wasn't like super sociable. I wasn't into the whole like drinking culture and like clubbing culture. So like I was like, I need something to do like on the side kind of thing. I found RuneScape and <laughs> I've been here ever since. Um, so yeah, like I th- my brother was like the initial reason when I was younger because I used to watch him like play games like a lot, whether it was like RuneScape or like Call of Duty or like whatever else he was playing. Like I just loved like watching. Um, and then I kind of got into old school like off the back of that, and then I came back in uni just because I needed something to do that wasn't drinking like everybody else was into. Um, but streaming. I have been like a viewer of Twitch like a lot longer than I've been a streamer on Twitch. Um, and I have like a lot of friends in the space who streamed. Novacy comes to mind. Um, and he actually helped me set up my stream and everything and gave me the confidence to, to start streaming. But I actually started streaming because I had like a project coming up for uni and I wanted to get better at public speaking. Um, I wasn't very good at it. I would stutter a lot and um, I still do it. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to get better at speaking to people and like being more fluent in how I spoke. So I started streaming. I didn't expect to stay here, uh, but I did. Um, but yeah, I built up like a pretty awesome community, like off of that. I guess like I guess it started because I hung out in a lot of people's streams before I streamed myself. Yeah, no. But yeah. That's, that's it was mostly just to get better at talking it helps just mm, talking it does even even just Definitely talking does. to your even just talking to your computer screen it works yeah 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 a little bit different when you know you've been talking to your chat in your room by yourself and then you have to <laughs> yeah. present in front of like 200 people but you know it's, yeah that is <laughs> the idea was that. yeah i just I mean, it's very very much the same, like, when I work, because I work from home, so it's very much just, like, talking at my monitor, but there was, like, a time in my life where that would have been, like, super, like, anxiety-inducing. Oh, yeah. Like, no, when I was a kid, like, picking up the home phone was, yeah. like, no thanks, like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm not doing that. This. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. click end call, like, privately, just, like, if, if, if nobody heard the call, I'm ending it, like, I'm, there's no <laughs> chance I'm not yeah. answering this. No, definitely, and, like, there used to be times, because I used to work in, like, the restaurant industry, yeah. um, there would be times that, like, people would call the restaurant, and, like, I would bolt from, like, the other side of the <laughs> restaurant to get away from that phone, like, I'm not answering, <laughs> like, that's not my job. I love um, that, yeah, that would have been me, probably, <laughs> at some point. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm, like, a lot better at it now, so I'm, I'm super grateful, but, yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, I, I I don't know. I like I think back and I'm like, nobody. It, it's like it's all in your head. It's like everything. Yeah. Like the social anxiety, it's all in your head. Nobody is. Nobody's like, oh, this person sucks at talking. Like, let's see if they can <laughs> yeah. manage this one. Like, nobody is thinking that. Like, everyone's <laughs> in their own heads, and so. Let me ask you this question yeah. to really throw off your game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I've had a few people like. Um, like in work and stuff that I've like I've done like a presentation or something mm-hmm. and like they'll compliment it afterwards and it's like oh, I was like I'm pretty sure I was like a shaking mess kind of thing and like there's been times before where like and it's happened a few times in this this call where I've been like cold and I can feel that my voice is like a little shaky and I'm like oh god I hope they don't think I'm like you know like, shaking in my boots kind of thing yeah but <laughs> <laughs> yeah See, and that's the literally the last thing that I've thought about this whole conversation. But it's <laughs> yeah, in your it's head. It's actually all in your head, right? That's so. so funny. Yeah, it helped me so much. I'm like, I'm super grateful for it. And like I mentioned it earlier, but the fact that like there are people that like want to spend their free time with me when I'm just being like a idiot is like <laughs> awesome. <laughs> like, Do you yeah, you probably have the same thing because I deal with this with streaming. It's like as soon as the conversation kind of like dies down or something or like the the energy's not there like i'm just like back in my head again i'm like oh, I i'm like do they hate me yeah I'm like <laughs> like i'm so boring right now like this is the worst and then it's just like do i just end early like do i just like this is just so bad like why am i even a streamer no. i'm just pathetic at this like this is so bad you're definitely not alone yeah most people experience that as a streamer i think like one thing to note too, though and like something that i've been like trying to like reassure myself about is like when I watch streams sometimes I just like listening to the music and like 
glancing over and like looking at what they're doing like they don't always have to be talking or like doing something like entertaining or like starting a conversation like sometimes i just like the vibe mm -hmm. um and i need to remind myself that like i don't need to constantly be talking yeah, because it's it's the reminder of that because when you're yeah. in the st when the camera's on or you're just like you know yeah. the live button's on and it's like i gotta do something like i have to do something but literally i will have a stream on they will have a bathroom break for eight minutes and I'm still there. I'm just jamming to their song and I'm waiting for them to come back and it's totally fine. I think you're so right about the camera thing because I feel it so much more when my camera is on. Yeah. Um, just because it's like, you can see me <laughs> <It's> <laughs> and constant. I can't see you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I'm definitely like a lot more comfortable in silence like when my cam isn't on because like usually when my cam isn't on i'm like pajama mode like reclined in my chair like mm -hmm. chilling out kind of thing um it's like a totally different vibe but when my cam's on and like it's a little quiet or like i'm like oh god like can i say something i shouldn't have i'm just like i just want to leave <laughs> yeah <laughs> Get it's, me. <laughs> it's bad because that you're in your head and then you're like i wonder what my facial expression looks like it probably looks <laughs> horrible like this is, can we just did i know i'm thinking right now <laughs> They know exactly what I'm thinking right now. Like they know. They know. And they're judging me. In my head. And their their only thing my viewers are focused on is they're zoomed up on my face right now. Like they're they're not doing their own thing. They're just yeah. hyper analyzing everything I'm doing. Yeah, never that way. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one who thinks. Yeah. No. You, yeah. It's just so important to see a broader perspective. Be like, no. Yeah. Everybody is like doing their own thing. They're like your streams mm -hmm. like background noise for so many people. Yeah, it's like very rare that like you're the only person, like the only thing that everybody has yeah. going on. Like, because <laughs> yeah, just... I always watch a stream. Like, if I'm you know pet hunting or you know doing something else, like I'm never just watching the stream unless I'm like going to bed kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. But... Um. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Here's a topic from Mod Knox. He asks, or he says, you have always used your platform to promote positive mental health and have always been someone people consistently reach out to support, for, to for support. What advice would you give to someone who needs a bit of a lift at the moment? I'm sure it'll reach someone who needs to hear it. I saw that question yesterday and i really liked it because i am somebody that cares a lot about mental health um but i was having like a particularly like not a great day yesterday and i think it's very normal that you know you don't have a great day every day because otherwise your great days wouldn't be great days mm -hmm. but like i think it's so important to if you're having a bad day or you're feeling a particular way about something it's so important to like let yourself feel those feelings like because you shutting away or like pretending they don't exist, like it's not going to help you. And like, I learned that the hard way. So like, when I was like, I'm just gonna use this as an example. Like when I was down yesterday, I was like, okay, like I'm giving myself today to be sad about it. Um, you know, I'll have a bit of a slow day. Like I didn't stream yesterday for the same reasons. Um, and like tomorrow, like tomorrow is going to be better because you just, at some point you have to kind of move on. Um, but giving yourself time to process stuff and like think about it is so important that like, I feel like people always feel like they need to be like presentable or approachable and like it's perfectly fine for you to just kind of take a step back for you and I feel like a lot of people don't do that very often I think like even if you know because I, I appreciate that not everybody is in like the position to like give themselves a day or a week or you know whatever else however long it is but I do think it's important to kind of like because you're the most important person right if you're not doing good then you can't do good for other people mm -hmm. um so it's like even if you give yourself an hour or like 15 minutes away from whatever it is that has you know is weighing on your mind or like step away and like do something that makes you happy like it's so <laughs> it's so crazy how I've like conditioned myself that like if I have an ice latte everything is okay <laughs> like <laughs> So it's like, I don't know, it feels like really cliche to say like do more of what makes you happy, but like yeah. finding something that like brings you joy and it doesn't have to be anything like extravagant or crazy or big. Like mine is literally a coffee, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's like finding something that can be a constant when like your life is like super crazy can like bring you back down to earth is what I found. Totally. The other thing, like one thing I've found is like just moving 
around. It doesn't even need to be like any like exercise really. It's just, I will feel the most down if I'm in my bed yeah. stuck, <laughs> like not moving, not having like fresh air, not like, because then that's when my mind really runs wild. And if I'm just, but as soon as I get up, as soon as I move, get a drink of water, get, if, if, especially if I go outside for any reason to go for a walk, go for a bike ride or anything, instantly feel so much better. Like it's just yeah. instantaneous. It's not even like this is going to, this is going to help in the next few days. Like, no, this is instantaneous. I will feel better. Yeah. Like I do resonate with people that, you know, have to spend or like need to spend x amount of time like in their bed and like you know sleeping is like usually a good coping coping mechanism that people use like i've been there mm -hmm. but like i don't know like if you manage to get yourself out of bed in the morning and like brush your teeth and like go for a walk like that is something to be proud of like getting up every day and like having a routine really helps um but like if you're having like a particularly bad day like the the best thing you can do is like remove yourself out of that space where you're like in this like deep dark mindset and like i don't know take a shower like showers are awesome for like you to like clear your mind or yeah. like remove yourself out of like that spot or like go for a walk it doesn't have to be anything crazy like you can literally just like sit outside your house like if you want but like anything to just like get you up and move in and getting you out of that spot that you're in is like a huge step and it's like such a small, simple thing, but it goes like such a long way. Like I will make the effort every day to go for a walk on my lunch break because I spend so much time in the house and it's just like getting outside for like, even if it's like 10 minutes, is so helpful. Yeah. And it feels amazing too. It does. It does. Yeah. And it also like makes you like, at least for me, it just kind of <clears throat> opens up like the narrow, narrow mindset that i have at that moment like i will think so it's almost like i'm claustrophobic it's just like i'm thinking just so like minimally about these little issues that build up and it just makes me feel horrible and then i go outside and I'm like the world is so big like everything mm -hmm. is everything like the just the perspective has now changed and it's like okay everything's fine like the world's gonna keep going around like we're we're good like i'm i'm fine so yeah. I think just that perspective of just being out in the open, it's like, okay, I've, this is better. When I'm like particularly down, like something that I like tell myself is like, and I mentioned it earlier, is like, you have to have like some like down days or like sad days. Otherwise, like your, your good days wouldn't be good. They would just be days, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's perfectly okay for you to have like a, something happen that like makes you sad or makes you angry or whatever else. But like, I don't know, just taking a second to like step away from whatever it is and like think about it or like feel what you're feeling. Crying is so good, by the way. Like it, it feels so is. good. I <laughs> like I, <yeah. laughs> I I literally like I I don't know. I I, I I don't even know how often I cry. Probably like every like few months I'll cry. Yeah. And oh my god, it's just like <sighs> this feels so good like this is what I it needed. takes a lot for me to cry but when i do it's like okay like i needed that to happen because like you're processing your emotions right yeah um but yeah like the longer you kind of just like pretend like everything is fine or like you don't take a second to to yourself um <laughs> you're just gonna kind of bottle it all up and it's like true and it's like people say this all the time that like oh like you can't bottle up your emotions and like the whole like expression of that like sounds like really silly because it's mm -hmm. like you can't you know physically bottle up your emotions but like if you sit on them and like you squish them down to like you think they're nothing like they're still there you know like so i don't know taking yeah. time for yourself and like doing things that make you happy is like probably the best advice i can give you and it's like i know it's not always like as straightforward as that but like if there's just like two things that you can remember that, like it's okay to like be down sometimes and like you know it's okay to have a, a down day like i think that's a step in the right direction there was a time in my life where like i was like in a pretty awful like mindset like i had something pretty crazy happen in my life and i didn't know how to deal with it and i spent oh, a long time you know rotting in my bed but eventually like i would wake up one day and it's like okay like 
I'm ready to go shower now or like I want to go get coffee or like hmm you know like I'm gonna move out of my bed in a second and grab some water because that's what I want to do mm. kind of thing like it like the small victories like they come and like it doesn't matter how small they are you know whether you brush your teeth or like you have a shower or you get coffee or whatever it is like they come and it's so good when they come and like you should celebrate it when they do um and it's important it's like honestly important to recognize that too that you've like there was a point in your mind and and so much of this is just what we're thinking of like if you can take a if you can take a moment to get out of your head mm -hmm. and even when you think no no this time for sure is the worst i'll never get out of this like you will like you'll get out of it like yeah. it just it always happens so yeah definitely and like i said like there was a time where i like didn't think there was like a means to the end but like you know gradually like you realize that like you know you, you want to do things again or like yeah. you have the energy to do things again or like the desire or the drive so like it does come yeah. um but like you also do need to help yourself like if you you know if you feel like you have the energy to you know take a walk or you know do something that makes you happy clean your room you know mm -hmm. whatever else like they are such like small things that like your mom would nag at you about when you was like six years old but like they do help you like so much like I don't know, being in like a clean space and like yes. a tidy space like helps so much. Yes. Cause it it's not now it's not something you have to look at and kind of like deal with visually yeah. and it, like it's yeah, being in a clean living space that is aesthetically pleasing is so big. Like it's just so nice. Yeah. It's like most people I feel like spend like a lot most of their time like you know in their bedroom or like their office if they have one like you know if they're working or whatever else um and like when you spend like so much time like in your space like you really do like need to make a conscious effort that like it is something that you want to be in every day um you know i i get it like when you're sat at your desk for 10 hours a day like sure like maybe you'll have a coffee cup and like I don't know, a glass of water and then like four plates there i don't know but like making the effort of like cleaning up around you when you're done with your stuff instead of just letting it like mounting up it's just so beneficial you've seen those like pictures on twitter i was thinking of like those <laughs> super crazy ones where like people Did you see have, that like... one just recently it was like tweeting around it was like a girl's uh gamer space and it was like a box of like sugar cookies and stuff like i did see one recently i can't remember who tweeted it um i feel like it was no i, I don't know but i did see one recently but that was kind of what i was thinking yeah, right like it's literally. so easy to just let like your what space around up. you like pile up but like if you just i don't know you spend like five minutes every day to just like clean up around like i make a conscious effort before i go to bed just mm. to like clean my office up a little bit um and then like weekends is when i would like dedicate time to like cleaning you know my kitchen or mm -hmm. my bedroom or whatever else but yeah like those 10 15 minutes that you'll like put into that every day is just like so beneficial long term yeah it pays dividends by yeah. the way um i never when i get into the end I've, i haven't gotten a duplicate clue bottle so uh what the hell is oh happening? really yeah i haven't gotten any sneaky suspicion e even even an easy and a medium like i got an easy and a medium like right off the get-go i haven't that's crazy yeah um i don't like that maybe it's bugged yeah who knows <laughs> maybe i'm just really unlucky okay cro you're gonna have to <laughs> have to answer this one crossbow asks why does no. she ga why does she gaslight <laughs> plumley when he is kind and innocent and what is the first thing she bought when she moved into her new place Tommy and I have such a love-hate relationship. No, I'm kidding. It's, like, mostly love. But we are, like, you know that person that just, like, you just constantly, like, quote-unquote, like, bully all the time? Yep. Um, you have, like, a very jokey relationship. Like, that is Plumley. Like, I can't remember the last time I had, like, a conversation with him where it's like, hey, how's your day going? It's always just, like, <laughs> Instant <shut berating>. up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, it's, it's all love. I, I like to think Plumley knows it. Um... I've known him a pretty long time, so I, I'm, I'm now I'm like paranoid that it's coming across like in my stream that like I hate this guy, and you know he's not welcome. <laughs> That's not good. But it's no, funny because like, um... there, there's like no way anybody could see it. Like you're not gonna keep somebody around that you actually don't <laughs> right. like. Like that's so right. important. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, we have like a very relationship. Like, I feel like everybody has like one person like that where they just like. <laughs> just bounce off each other in like the worst way yep. um, <laughs> but um yeah that's that's for me i um 
He's great, though. Um, what was the other question about moving in? What is the first thing you bought when you moved into your new place? Um, so I moved into a new place, like, a month ago now. Um, and, like, outside of, like, silly things, like, cleaning products and, like, food, which is, you know, like, the essentials, mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact first thing I bought. I bought a new desk, um, which was, like, I guess, like, quote unquote, like, big purchase is I bought like a, I bought a standing desk um, when I moved here because I had a lot more space um is it electronic yeah. or is it hand crank yes nice. no it's electronic good, yeah good. but um my office has like sloped ceilings so um where my desk is currently like it's kind of like right above where my monitors are like if I was to crank this up my monitors would like hit the roof. Um, so where I currently have my desk, it's like not best to like use it for like its purpose. But mm. like the desk is like twice as big as like my old one was. So it's like already like such a great improvement. Yeah. But fun fact, if I put this desk on its highest setting, it's taller than me. <laughs> like you can actually like walk under it like without, <laughs> without yeah. crouching. It's taller than me. That, um, mine's almost taller than me. Did I don't know how like powerful yours is. I don't. I don't ever want to do this, but technically, according to like the like owner's manual or whatever, you can sit on this thing while you lift sat it. Sat on mine. I've sat on mine while yeah. you lifted it. Uh, I didn't do it while I lifted it because, like I said, I have slope ceilings in yeah. here. But um, yeah, now I'm crushed. curious and ready to I'm, I'm break just... my desk. Um, <laughs> I I, th I think I have I think I have trauma from uh, when I first got glasses <laughs> in sixth grade. Because okay. so I got these new. I that was the first time I got my eyes checked, and I I had to get a prescription, so I got glasses, and they were like these stretchy ones, where like the the part that goes around your ears, like that you could you could um springboard them so that they go wide. You know what I'm saying? Like you could like yeah 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 kind of like extend them even further than beyond your ears. Like you just keep stretching them. And so, oh, and the middle section where you know, like it, you know, the little thing that rests on your nose, like that thing was oh, also yeah. elastic. So you could bend it in, you know, and you could bend it outward too. So it was just like, it was really like kind of like a strong spring. So it would just instantly go back to normal. But and they were glasses? Yeah, they were glasses, but they were just kind of like more like, I don't know, like springy materials. Like you could just kind of bend them in every way. It was kind of fun to just mess around with them if they weren't on your face. And I decided in class to test the springing nature of these things on the edge of the nose. So I decided to just bend it as far as I could and it just broke. <laughs> and so for, wow. for the rest of the day, I have these glasses on. So they're just split in half, basically. So I just, the rest of the day, I have this thing like just prickling on each side of my nose because they're not actually connected. So I have like two like eyeglasses and it was like the first period where... I broke them and so the rest of the day I'm like walking around with like two pieces of glasses just attached to my ears still but like just not actually connecting in the middle and uh it was just the worst because I was getting made fun of by some of my friends for it and I, I refused to like tape them because that was like stereotypical nerd if you tape the I was gonna of glasses, say like this is sounding like something from like a movie yeah you know, no like, it's straight, the nerd, like, straight breaks, like, glasses. But, I, but I was <laughs> not going to tape them I was not gonna be right. that guy that's like the first week of having glasses I have them fucking taped up like that is just I'll be ruthlessly bullied for the rest of my life I would rather be blind <laughs> So by like the end of like, it was probably toward the end of the day, I just decided to take them off and I was just walking around pretty much blind, not fully mm -hmm. blind, but it was bad. And yeah, that, I think that, I think that's my trauma. So now, now I'm scared of testing the limits of things. So even though this right. desk says I can sit on it while I lift it, I'm like, I'm not even going to test. You're not going shit. anywhere near that. Yeah. Well, if I ever test mine, I'll let you know how it goes. Um, okay, yeah. But no, I'm like genuinely scared that like, I'll like, press the button by accident or it'll have like a mind of its own and my desk will just like shoot up and then like my monitors are just like gone oh. so i i have it unplugged currently mm. but and yeah and the desk got... is like sorry no no you're you're good i was interrupting uh, and you just got to be careful as well with the wires because like for me if i lift my thing up all the way like every single wire that's attached yeah to PC, yeah yeah, yeah. It's really tense yeah, yeah. yeah there was um when i first built my computer i had my one of the cables from my monitor to like the back of my computer, I plugged that in and I forgot that I did. 
and I went to like twist my computer like back to where I wanted it originally and like completely like ripped the cable out of the socket yeah. and like I had just built this computer like oh. first computer I've ever built it took me nine hours like it was pretty expensive and I'm like oh gosh <laughs> what did I do so I'm very cautious about like sudden movement and wires that like i have my desk like unplugged like i yeah i'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> doing that that's probably smart mine's mine has never had well it might have a mind of its own but it's never showed it to me yet so we're good yeah it's not a risk i was planning on taking so it's so nice though being able to just stand occasionally like i rarely do it on stream but off stream like if i'm just sitting I'll just go stand for 10 minutes and it's just so easy. Yeah. Like, this is so nice. The whole point I wanted one was because, like, obviously, like, I spend a lot of time here during the day because of, like, working. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just nice to, like, come and go and, like, you know, not have to sit all the time. And, you know, it's not exactly, like, super healthy for you to be sat, like, a, a lot of the day. Yeah. But, like, like I said, like, I've just moved into this place. So, like, I don't know if my desk will stay here, but, like... I would like to find a place in the apartment that I can like utilize it. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. you know, I'm you know I will have this desk for a long time, and I'm sure I'll live in places that it's a little bit more suitable for. Mm. But I would like to experience it. Yeah, you should also. This is just my own suggestion. You should invest in like a squishy mat. There's some like really really nice like sort of like not like movable massage mats. Like I say massage mats, it's not like it's actually like vibrating or anything, but it's just a a it's like hard to say there's like peaks and valleys in the mat where like you could stand in different positions and it kind of gives you like some good support for your feet and stuff and it's just squishy oh. i've yeah i will have to look into that yeah they're expensive though if you want to get like really nice ones but i have like this exercise mat i always shove underneath whenever i'm standing for a decent period yeah just saves you like standing on the cardboard floor kind of thing yeah i mean um, i have slippers i mean even with the slippers on it's just like uh, i'd rather stand on a squishy mat it feels nice yeah yeah i got like um because like i'm still getting stuff to the apartment but i got this like super fluffy like rug from my office like mm. two days ago and it's just so nice like i'm such a fan of just like standing in the office <laughs> like, yeah doing nothing just standing but <laughs> yeah you need to like for me, I need to be so incentivized for yeah. like ergonomic stuff. Like if if there's a reason to stand, like if I have a really really squishy squishy mat that was expensive but it was worth it, like now I'm going to want to stand. I'm gonna stand on it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting my money's worth. Well. Exactly. <laughs> so that's that's the kind of stuff you have to invest in. It's the same thing with like my chair. I wanted a nice chair. Yeah. And I mean, it's so important for you to invest in like your equipment when you spend so much time like yeah. somewhere, right? So totally. Okay, um, Daisy, we have gone through majority of topics <laughs> that I've decided to cover, and uh, I was really, really nice having you on today. So we're gonna finish things off with a few shout outs. So if you have this any in mind. This is like the quickest three hours of my life. It's almost been four hours. Isn't that crazy? That's well, crazy. Over three and a half. <laughs> that is crazy. I was like, it's funny too, because, you know, we were talking a little bit before we started recording and I was saying, like, I have no idea how these are so long. Like, I was worried this wouldn't even reach an hour, but <laughs> you make it pretty easy. So, well, send that to you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I guess just, you know, everybody that asked the question and everyone that's listening, um, still, that's going to blow my mind, just like the people that like, hang out in my stream will. Um, I think when you approached me originally to, like be on your podcast I, I there was like a i guess like a good hour because i was on my way home from work where i was kind of like am i interesting enough <laughs> <laughs> i was like had that like imposter syndrome yep, and i yep. was like had this like back and forth so like yeah honestly anybody that has like listened the whole way through like that's kind of awesome to me and it generally blows my mind so yeah just thanks for being here yeah, no, they they I, they surprise me sometimes with the that the length of some of the casts where I'm like I was not expecting to go beyond like two hours and they just fly by. So, yeah, if if any casts go beyond like three three and a half, like it was it was a great conversation. I I chose to keep it going. Like I want I want to keep it going. So you've been a wonderful guest and that makes me happy. Yeah, this was really nice and this is our first time ever talking too. Like yeah. we've seen each <laughs> other's streams, but that's yeah. the extent. 
like the extent of like our conversation has been like GM. <laughs> like yeah, even before we got in this call. Literally. <laughs> Just good morning. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, but no, thank you for uh, coming on. It was really nice getting to know you a little bit better as well. And yeah. for thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah. Had for, a great time. For those still listening, down in the description, I'm going to have Daisy's links down there. So your Twitch, Twitter. Yeah, Twitch, Twitter, that'll do. That will, yeah, okay. when, that's probably the best, best way to reach me. Do you have a schedule for streaming that people can, like, you know, watch um, your stream? I stream after work, so it'll be sometime after 6 p.m. Uh, UTC. I think we're in UTC. Um, and then weekends is kind of like usually around the same time, maybe a little earlier. But yeah, evenings, UK time probably the best best time okay cool cool thank you very much daisy next week guys we're gonna have guides for us all on the cast so he's a collection log youtuber and should be really fun i've been wanting to get him on for like over a year at this point so it's finally happening so looking forward to that and uh yeah thank you all for listening and daisy once again thank you very much for your time today thank you